Good evening, and welcome once again to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry here on the mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. I'm your host, as always, Ian, and joining me quite often these days. Yeah, it's Cameron. Yeah. Hello. Thanks so much for uh, coming to uh, watch us today. Uh, what we'll be doing this episode is, uh, well, why don't you start us off? I will be continuing to paint the same goddamn Silver Tower miniature I've been painting for like a year. Uh, we're going to finish it up one day. Did I ever tell you the story about my Uncle Bob who worked on the wooden his wooden model of HMS Victory for 30 no, years? No, no. Yeah. That's, uh, that's beginning to seem pretty, uh, yeah. pretty familiar. Yeah. <laughs> next one's just going to be a, okay. Well, uh, we've spent two years on the last figure. The next one is uh, going to be a uh, gray yeah. man. Yeah, gray man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, just primer. <laughs> nice, n nice and tacky. That's mm. a good, good mm -hmm. texture on that. Uh, alongside that, I'll be starting off today by uh, upgrading a extension cord that's been in my family for a generation. <laughs> That's, my father built this extension cord, and then he handed it down to me, and I'm going to make it better. Mm. Uh, that's probably not going to take up the whole thing, so we've got bonus projects set uh, in the background. So Okay. Might as well get to it here. All right. Well, yeah, let's begin. Uh, I'm finishing this one up in the first half hour today. Oh, hey. I've decided to set set a goal, and I'm sticking to it. You're, you're going to actually just... Power through. Go for actual completion, necessarily, yeah. rather than a uh, an artistic... The... Uh, the perfect is the enemy of the uh, the the playable. Oh yes, the cult of Dunn. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things. Uh, actually, before that, we're gonna have a look at this XLR cable because apparently it's been causing hisses. Yeah. So let's just see if there's anything wrong with it, continuity-wise. Though we probably won't see too much difference. I'll check the resistance too, just mm. to be sure. The old continuity tester. I heard they finally hired one of those for uh, Star Trek. Womp womp. Are, are, wait, are you actually serious about that? Or I don't that... know, actually. <laughs> Did you see the deleted scene from uh, this season of Discovery? No, I didn't. Ooh, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure how much uh, information I should give out over the air, but... Ooh, well, is it good? It, yeah, it was a deleted scene of one of our uh, characters joining a secret society within Star... or receiving an invitation to join a secret society within Starfleet. They didn't. They did. They're, they're bringing it in line with... Well, I mean, it was supposed to take place in the Prime continuity, if I recall. Yep. So, that would make sense. Oh, here we go. That's interesting. What's up? Our, uh, our little ground boy is not giving... Uh, doesn't seem to be making the beepy noise they should. Okay, no, that's fine. Oh, huh. well, if the ground is damaged, that would explain interference, wouldn't it? You know what I can tell? I, I can tell exactly why this isn't working. Oh? So I've got a solid connection on both points here. Mm hmm And if I bend the cable, uh. it begins to go on. And if I release the pressure on it, it goes away. We're very hard on our XLR yeah. cables here. So I think I'll probably have to, uh, but actually that's good because that tells me exactly where the short is. And that means this will be a relatively easy fix once we get around to the actual soldering of tonight's. Uh, mm. It's like, I guess the bend is a bit like uh, that. You hear the story about the, uh, the practical joke that uh, somebody zip tied in a harmonica inside their friend's engine compartment of their car? Oh my lord. So That's... there would be this horrible noise when they were driving, and as soon as they stopped to try to find it... It just stops. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is that, that is the worst mechanics sort of case of... Uh, yeah, it, uh... take it to the mechanic, and the mechanic's like, you have some real assholes for friends. <laughs> I was just thinking about a problem I'm trying to uh, troubleshoot at work right now. That we have one person, one person in mm -hmm. the company, who it keeps getting an old version of the page. Huh. And I can't, for the life of me, figure out why. We've gone so deep as... Well, the last thing we tried is to have them uh, set up a new Chrome profile. Just completely uh -huh. blow away any chance that they might have the cache. Right. Still a problem. Really? Yep. Incognito window and everything? Yep. Well, don't that just beat all get out? Mm-hmm. And they're very insistent. <laughs> Are they local? 
Yes, they're they in are. The building. Yes, they are in the building. They are on the network. And the only thing I can think of might be is some form of redirect that's occurring above HD access. And I don't know where to go next. So that, yeah, that sounds supremely irritating. Extremely. So let's get on with the, uh, the extension cord here. I'm just pulling out uh, my favorite bit, the Robertson square head and all. And that's all we'll be using to take apart this extension cord. This extension cord was uh, one that was actually made by my father. Uh, really? You weren't kidding? Yeah. You can literally, turns out you can just buy cable and then ends at uh, your local home hardware shop. Uh, we used Home Depot, I guess, this time. And uh, yeah, cut the, cut the cable to the length you want and then just screw on these ends. Just like with Cat5. Yeah, pretty Back much. Back when we used to wire up. <laughs> Back in our day when we used to wire up LAN parties. <laughs> uh, but in the glorious days post BNC. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, though it's a lot easier with cable. Uh, Power cables, because there's no expensive crimper required. Mm. It's all just screws. So let's take that off there. And lo and behold, three wires. Black, white, and green. Don't touch the black, because that's how you die. The black wire carries all the amps. Ooh, this is a nice plug. You know what else is a nice plug? We here, <laughs> Loading Ready Run. Right. Are, this stream is brought to you by me. Oh, interesting. So I haven't uh, unplugged the, or I haven't disassembled this one yet, but uh, let's see if we can just get a, uh, a close shot in on the plug here. Because these screw, I've never actually seen these screws before. These screws are not, this is a normal thread on a screw. And this is the uh, thread that comes with, that it plugs into the back end of the plastic here. And I was wondering like, no, oh, it just seems to take about a, a half turn or a full turn to get these out. And yeah, these are just very aggressive threads. I'm impressed. But yeah, your black goes to your small hole on there. Your white goes to your big hole and your ground or your green goes to the central plug. Whee! So let's continue the disassembly. Oh, good positive drive on these screws. All right. Stranded. Oh, well, we'll deal. All right, let's clean up those ends. So you can use it in the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep remembering to get you a mic. So that's our spare end that we no longer need. Let's not forget to put take that off so we don't have to do that in the future. And what did we buy here today to get this done? Well, we bought this uh, plastic junction box. We've got a plate for the front of it, which thankfully comes in matching gray. I was a little bit worried about that. Uh, a strain relief kit for these boxes, and just a simple USB inclusive uh, socket. And so we're going to wire that up. So these can be had for between about $30 Canadian and up, depending on what sort of model you want to get or what how many of them you want to put together. Cheaper models can be found online if you look in Amazon or especially on eBay or the various Chinese part sites. But I need this now, so we mm. got it now. As you can see, three connectors for your, uh, for your black, white, and ground. The nice thing is this is actually a really kind of cool uh, device in that it actually gives you a, uh, not just markers for which is positive and negative, but actually tells you also it is hot and white, or which one is hot and which one is white. And of course, which one is green for ground. Uh, they've also got a strip gauge on here, which is interesting. 
Let's see what that's all about. Because you'll generally want to strip your cable too. Oh yeah. So strip gauge is literally just telling you, giving you an indication on the uh, on the thing here of how long three quarters of an inch is, which is apparently how long you're supposed to uh, strip these cords for this to work. But we're just going to go ahead and use the strippage we've got. Actually, we might need a bit more than that because we're a bit, kind of a bit length limited. Maybe we'll just actually strip a bit more of this uh, yellow external insulating wire. Uh, so yeah, we'll just feed that through here. This is a project I've kind of wanted to do that in uh, do in the past, mm -hmm. but I've just never had the time to. So what was the impetus behind deciding you need an outlet box? The reason behind going uh, putting together one of these boxes was just that a lot of our stuff these days works off of USB. Right. So rather than wasting a plug for USB and plugging in a secondary port, uh, you would you can now take an extension cord and go all the way out to wherever your workplace is. So for example, here uh, in the studio, I'd be able to actually take this extension cord to the wall, bring it to the table, and now I'd have power for USB in addition to actual power. So was it, it was meant to be a TTSF like piece of equipment ultimately, or is this going to be a whole? Oh no, thing? this this is for me. Okay, this one's for me. If uh, if we want one for the office, well then we can make more, and pay for them. But yeah, it's just a standard. Uh, it's a standard uh, wall adapter, or I guess it's standard now. This is a. They've been. But they've had these for about a couple of years now. But only now have I noticed you able to actually purchase them in store, for a low low price. Uh, the junction box we've got here is non-threaded on top, so we're just going to put in a friction fit one. Maybe later I'll throw on some epoxy and we can permanent that up. But All right, our strain relief has come with a number of these little cord holes. I think we're going to need to use the largest one. But this will make, at least the top, waterproof. The rest of it has no chance of being waterproof. All right. Okay, that's almost good. Maybe one more step down, we can make that nice and tight. Through the holes, little wire friends. Ooh, okay, that's going to be a good tight fit on there. Yes. Have a look at that. I guess the rest of these rubber nubbins are uh, of no use anymore. <laughs> An exercise left to the consumer. Yes. So we make sure that we get everything in the right direction, and already we haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> Reassuring. Reassuring. Good, good, yeah, good. Good, good, to, good to catch it now. But, uh, all right. So we want that to go in like that, and then the top clamps down like that. Cool. Cool. This seems to go in in that direction best. Do you have to put the screw end on the cable first? No, the screw, well, yes. Okay, that's, yeah, I was wondering about that. Wait, do I? Well, if you're going to screw the... I'm just trying to think here. Yeah, this needs to go on top. Okay. Then this will go in like this. There we go. And then, like this. Uh, Arclight, why am I attaching a wall socket to an extension cord rather than pulling an outlet from the wall and replacing it with a USB one? Yeah, this is just to, uh, for a temporary use extension cord. See, I needed to go do some work out in the, uh, I was going to say the garage. I can't afford a garage. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. If I wanted to go out on the balcony and work on something, oh, that would be what mm -hmm. I'd use for this. Uh, 
Something else we use in here maybe would be to up on the lighting rigs. I know we oftentimes use GoPros. Oh, hell yeah. And it would be nice to have two outlets with two additional USBs to run GoPros in addition to other things. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we'll have to think about that. Or is that just too low-hanging fruit? Well, I mean, we'd have to get up into the ceiling to do it, so it's not that low-hanging. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Corey. All right, well, I'm just going to strip a bit more of the stuff off there. That's a lot of paper mm. in this one for stress relief. All right, let's cut that. Actually, let's see. let's use this cutting board to make it nice and clean. I'm eventually going to need a new blade in this, I think. What kind of blade are you using? Uh, it's just your standard utility knife blade. The trapezo trapezoidal one. Mm. I don't know if it has a distinction beyond that. All right. Let's... I think this brush might be on its last legs. Oh no. Eh, it's had a good long life. But I fear that life is at an end. Holy mm. fucking moly. Okay. Is it that bad? <laughs> Oh, no, I swapped out a brush and then it behaved slightly differently than the one I've been using. So. Oh, okay. Oops. Now I have a whoopsie to cover up. A oh, fucky boingo. Exactly. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Oof. It's hard on the hard on the arm. Yeah, you only got two of those. Ah! Anarin! That is a Stanley blade named after the Stanley Cool Tool Company that came up with. Oh. That's... Now I've learned something, my thing for the day. T-I-L. Yeah. That goes against the entire message of this show, you realize. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that message of the show is a bit of a farce, Corey. We do learn things. Is it, though? Just, Do we? We just don't talk about it. And safety isn't always third. No. Frequently, we actually do know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Julie showed me this video online that was every uh, Tim Taylor grunt. Oh, God. Superimposed. <gasps> Wait, at the same time? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Exacerbated grunt. It was a bit of a slog getting through junior high in the mid 90s with a father named Tim who was known as a sort of handyman. Mm. Mm. Yeah, these, these wire strippers are very old and may need. Do you uh, want a uh, different set? Sorry? Do you want a different set? Uh, no, I'm done with them now. Okay. But uh, in future, I may need to look at. Maybe just using in-house tools rather we, than my own anymore. We have an we have an automatic wire stripper in the uh, in the other room. Why didn't I use that? Because it's buried in the bottom of the toolbox, and I didn't know about it until yesterday. Oh, good! <laughs> <laughs> Hurrah! It's just, it's just stuff I find out when I start looking through things. Why this would have come in handy months ago. Yeah. Well, better put it back. Yep. yep. <laughs> better bury it at the bottom of that toolbox. But in the meantime, I'll take out all of the all the pokey little screws and shit that that lacerated my hand when I shoved it in there looking for a thing. Mm. Mm. That's a good choice. And the and the open the open container of knife blades. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> were, were they Stanley knife blades? No, they were not. They're Ulfa uh, 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 progressive knives. <laughs> ah yes. Yeah. What like sharp kind from Evangelion? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the actual term for, the, for those knives either is, but progressive knives is the is the time I've, the term I've always used. Yeah. And amongst my friend group, it's always recognized for what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like 
vine that comes out of your shoulder and just breaks off? Yeah. Yeah! Yeah. All right, I'm not doing good things to these wires here today. Let's turn that around, turn the wire around, shove it in the screw hole. Ah, thank you. Ooh. That's some that's some production going on over there. Oh hey, that looks good. Double screens. That yeah, we... isn't that awesome? Good job, Corey. Yeah, thank you, Corey. <laughs> Been doing this for how many years now? We hadn't I, thought of that before. I was sitting over here manning the the zoom, uh, and uh, and I was like I. I hope I can get this shot locked off in time for, for so that Corey can put it up and it doesn't look like, like trash. And I look over and she's already got it up in picture in picture. And I'm like, all right, well, be a good boy today, Beach, because you're going to be on camera a lot. <laughs> I got to actually think about my job today. <laughs> job. <laughs> so I've just realized y'all can go like half an hour without looking at the preview screen. Yeah. You can put up whatever you I'm want. Focused. What is special about the night I'm painting? Oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe he paints in his off time, writes sonnets. He wants uh, he wants his own house someday. He's a cat person. Wants to settle in the country. Likes to bake. Nobody asked him, really, but nobody ever asks. Just go and go and tank this demon. Question from the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. Shouldn't the wires be in the box before connected to the outlet? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Damn. It sucks. Okay, honestly, how many of you had money riding on that? If that if that was the third thing in the poll, I'll be extremely pleased. Ian assembles the, the entire thing without even checking to see if it needs to go into the box first. Ah. <sighs> Devastating. Yeah, just ruined. Start over with new parts. Go sell your cards, live in the woods. Delete your account. Yeah. Cut up your Home Depot rewards card. God, yeah, I was just going to say, I'm so glad that Home Depot isn't staffed by, by hard, uh, what do they call them? Core gamers? Internet dipshits? Haters. <laughs> Wall screw noob. Blah. Why am I so? Oh, I must be getting old. <laughs> getting so sloppy with this brush. Uh, I mean, all of us are getting old, Cameron. One minute per minute. When is it that we stop caring? Mm. When I was about 15, that was the advice I was given. <laughs> wow. I was working in the kitchen at, at White Spot. Oh. I've told this story. I'm pretty sure you have. I mean, you were making yeah. parfaits. Basically, I was making desserts, and, you know, people were coming up and yelling at me, and servers were giving me a hard time about things. And one of the cooks was like, hey, you know, you, you, you're a good kid. I see getting worked up about things. It's important that you realize none of this actually matters. Nobody cares, and <laughs> it's important that you not worry about anything. And I'm like, that is not the pep talk I was expecting to get, no. but I appreciate it. Weirdly, though, after seeing a photo of the uh, CEO of that uh, that restaurant chain mm -hmm. and how he likes to pour a beer. Or what oh, was could... really, is, is that the one that you posted? Yep. Where it's just like, all head. It's a hundred percent head. The man is just smiling at the camera, pulling a, a beer off of his own, uh, and a white spot tap. I might add, mm -hmm. like it's they, like they have some sort of special white spot brew, and it's just all foam. Disgusting. It's the lightest beer you'll ever drink. It's unseemly.
Oh, right. Well, that one went in nice and easy. Let's add the other screw. The constant going off of that camera overhead, too, just makes me think that someone's taking pictures of all these streams. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, during the quiet points of Dice Friends, it was extremely unsettling. It was like, oh, the paparazzi's here. I've got to be on my A game. <laughs> <laughs> Someone might see this later. Twitch underscore bar. I own a bar that live streams and watches streams. Can I add you to the list of channels we can watch at the bar? I've been looking for more IRL channels. Certainly, we're not all IRL. Uh, yeah. We do a lot of game streaming as well. We're a very variety channel. But uh, it's probably not a bad... It would probably play pretty well in the bar. Yeah. Depending on your... I mean, uh, can we curse? Yeah, we swear a lot. Yeah. yeah. Do curse. Uh, maybe, maybe come check us out in a couple of weeks on a Saturday when we do a little show called Loading Ready Live. How about you check the VODs that are available on Twitch? That's also good too, yeah. You can see, uh, get a sampling of the things that we get to do too. But yeah, we'd love to. You want to show us off? Show us off. Yeah. We appreciate the exposure. <laughs> After all, aren't we all just working for exposure? I yeah. was working for the weekend. Yeah, I'm, I'm working to, to limit exposure. To the elements. Everybody's work. Thanks. Th thank you, Cam, for <laughs> getting that hey. firmly lodged in my head. Hey. The world is a vampire. Dun, 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 oh. dun, dun, the world dun. is a van pile. <laughs> it's too bad Billy died in that car accident on the uh, Melancholy Tour, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and they found some weird look-alike to, yeah. to change their name. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least we got a door as like that nice lo-fi underproduced album of b-sides <laughs> all right i think i'm done that was anticlimactic uh i think it works <laughs> oh no no we don't i've not uh, finished just what you Aha. love to hear about all your electrical equipment that's eh, probably fine think of the passcode i need to slide this down and into the hole I think and then i need to slide this down into the hole and then I need to slide this down and screw it on top. For that good, good strain relief. This is actually a really good strain relief, to be honest. Nice. Mm. Okay, wow. That came together pretty nicely. Awesome. Let's test it. Uh, do we have anything USB powered nearby? We have those uh, webcams. Oh, that will not work at all. <laughs> you asked. Yeah, we need something that we can uh, just throw it in to see if it'll charge off. Do you want like a phone cable or something? That would work really well, yes. You can try to charge my phone. I would, yeah, if we can find a uh, cable of lightning. We should have somewhere nearby. And while you're there, Corey, would you be so kind as to plug that into the in, fr the in front of me? There's a there's a there's a cable on the ground. Uh, triple tap. I think he means to plug it in down there. Yeah. And if you blow up my phone, I can just beat you with the cable. Yeah, that would work. <laughs> <laughs> he did make it into quite the bludgeon, didn't he? All right, Ian. I'm going to need you to go and pick me any cable you want from the cable bin. <laughs> Ooh, the fifty pin. <laughs> hey, we got there. That seems to be working. Okay, do you remember the vine of the, um, what was it? It was, uh, it was a, a phone with a cable running off screen, and then um, it was a corn dog sitting in, <laughs> on a paper plate that somebody had poured a bunch of monster in, and yes. then they plugged the thing into it, yep. and it turns the phone on. turns on, and you just hear all these people go, Whoa! <laughs> it was, it was a good. I mean, break. obviously. You know, yeah. incredibly fake, but so satisfying. I mean, you could probably chain together enough potato batteries to get five volts. But I just love that it was a corn dog. Yeah. <laughs> and that they used the wall wart, like the little two prong. Oh, yeah. iPhone nubbin. It just had that really great. Um, also the crunch noise. Oh. Oh yeah. So I think what I need to do is actually definitely make one of these for the office, okay. and then. Uh, 
And step two is put some little rubber plugs on there. To keep it from sliding off the table? Yeah. So what do you have lined up for the rest of the evening, Ian? Ah, well, first we're going to fix this. All right. But when we're done that, when I was uh, doing my normal trolling of, a, of the Valley Village, mm -hmm. well, back uh, earlier last year, I received from Texan Reverend a uh, set of a wheel nice. that came with a set of pedals. And the pedals are, you know, they, 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 they function, mm -hmm. they're pretty good. But uh, he mentioned that one of the th reasons he bought the Thrustmaster wheel he did is because it is upgradable. Ooh. Well, How these look? were at Value Village. Oh, well. Which is a much nicer set of pedals. The, the wheel was nowhere to be found. I assume that the person just decided they wanted to actually straight up upgrade their pedals even more than these. But yeah, I'm going to make these compatible with uh, the Thrustmaster. Man, I remember the days when I used to play a lot of flight sims, like Aces of the Pacific, Aces over Europe, mm -hmm. X-Wing. I never got into Falcon 3, but <laughs> man, the oh, the, the flight sim like peripherals where you'd have like the the stick and then like your potato thing covered yeah. with buttons. Your throttle, I guess. Yeah, maybe? throttle, I guess. The, the, the HOTAS system. Oh, yeah. Hotas. Oh God! Wow. Yeah. I, were you around when I brought in my Thrustmaster from back in the day? I wasn't. This is one of the long-term projects I've got on the go. No and kidding. I should probably bring it back, but it was it was an old ADB, uh, the Apple Desktop Bus Thrustmaster Ooh. system, which is old and gone. But the right. joystick is still like in functional, front of right? So I've spent a number of a few hours mapping out all of the mm -hmm. buttons in it. Yeah. And so the next step is going to be grabbing a microcontroller, plugging them all in, and then programming that to be a new joystick. Cool. And I'm going to eventually have a USB Thrustmaster from the 90s. Nice. Yeah. Going to put in like heavier weighted springs? Ooh, maybe I should. But what I'll have to do is build my own pedals for that. Mm. Because I didn't buy the Thrustmaster pedals because they were too expensive for what they are. Mm. Which is, well, as we'll see when we get into these, just some, they're literally just some plastic, a little bit of metal, some screws, and some potentiometers. Hmm. Well, you especially when you can just pull them out of any like, you know, Nissan at a junkyard. <laughs> <laughs> the actual pedals themselves, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is interesting. This is one of the more elaborate uh, XLR cables that I've seen. There are a lot of, I don't want to say, well, there are a lot of moving pieces, not necessarily because they're supposed to move, but just because they do. That reminds me of, uh, speaking of which, uh, Smashing Pumpkins concert I went to when I was a teenager. A lot more moving pieces than you expected? Uh, things moving not because you wanted to or because you had to, but because you were. Right. <laughs> the thing where everyone's jumping up and down. Oh, mm. the, the mosh pit? Yeah. Is that what they called it? Well, that wasn't really a mosh pit. That was just like... Everyone pogoing? Yeah, kind of. Okay, I haven't figured out how to get things out of this particular plug yet. They, there has to be a way, because this was not soldered in situ like this, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Also, did you know that this cable can twist? No. Yeah, its, it's orientation is not necessarily fixed. Hmm. Big so mood. Th that's handy. There's no way they did that in place. It doesn't pull back. Does the sleeve, the, the 90 degree sleeve, does it actually come back? I think it might. And I think I need to get in there with a little bit of a metal spudger, which is okay. to say, one of my ruined. Aha, there we go. There's a plastic collar that I think just needs to be removed and that should allow for goodbye <laughs> run free sorry <laughs> i laughed and dipped the camera like an idiot uh did oh, it go on the floor i see it okay yep, the, I can uh, it without any problem okay the eternal sound of of miniatures the click of a, a pair of side cutters and then patwang <laughs> oh goodbye <laughs> 
Goodbye. Wow, that was how many pieces in that kit? Enough. Okay. We'll get that later. Okay, I don't think that was exactly what I needed to... Two, or what was it? Oh, wait, that was exactly what I needed. And that just causes everything to slide right out. Hmm. I'll give you... I'll, I'll give you guys a closer look upon reassembly. But for now, it's just a matter of resoldering this cable. So as is my suggestion for each one doing this sort of thing, take a picture. It's easier to understand the notes. Sure. Like if you were to say, oh, the uh, that's fine. The bare one goes to the left, and then the red one goes to the right. Well, that like yeah. Suddenly you realize that you've turned it over. Yeah. Or from which direction? Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'll need is the soldering iron. Also gratefully provided to uh, us by viewers like you. Mm. Specifically, Lord Hosk is the viewer like you. Oh. He's just like you. Only he gives the soldering iron. <laughs> Actually, one of the reasons for actually getting around to this particular uh, project was that I knew that uh, wire, uh, USB soldering irons are starting to get a lot more popular. Really? And apparently effective. Oh, okay. How does was... USB push that kind of... Uh, like, amperage? Yeah, range? yeah, you need amperage, yeah, right? Apparently, you can get things hot enough via just five volts. Huh. I'll be right back. Need a little water. Oh, I need water. Might as well do it on camera, Ian. That's a good point. I'm pretty sure they can hear you anyway. That's a good point. Uh, just watering up the sponge. That's enough. Now give me back my water bottle. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, let's get this. No more than 500 milliamps, says Aaron. Really? Hmm. 5 volts at 2 amps. Now USB is... USB, yeah, because USB now pushes 3 amps, doesn't it? And higher, I believe. Okay. USB, yeah, there's many, too many now saying USB 3 can go way higher than 2. Hmm. Yeah, so standard USB plugs like this one, you're going to get up to 2. But. Well, now I know. I learned some stuff that made me angry uh, the other day. Mm -hmm. um, Ain't that the truth? About yes, about a year ago, uh, somebody tested the Nintendo Switch. Uh, ah, I've heard about this. Yeah, and was like, this thing does not follow the USB C standard. Any part of the standard? Yeah, like it's. Are you on well, mic? I am. Good. Okay. Good. It, I just want to make sure it, that. In as much as it asks for like all the voltages you expect from USB power delivery, it definitely does that. But what it doesn't do is um, what it doesn't do is ask for everything in the right order. It asks for, every, you're supposed to go through a specific handshaking protocol and it has an alternate mode as well. So if it identifies a dock that has the alternate mode, such as the Switch dock itself has this alternate mode that Nintendo came up with, yeah. it asks for that first. And if it doesn't see that, then it freaks the hell out and requests like, well, I'm gonna need like less amperage and then the device is connected to it says okay yeah i'm gonna send you less amperage and it's like cool send me all of your amperage and it's like what and then it freaks out and then it like causes a power issue and the switch will brick that seems bad yeah it's it's poorly Why? engineered and i hate that i have to say that but that's the problem it's, it's yeah that's gotta be that's gotta hurt yeah right like and it's 
unsure as to whether it's something you can fix with just firmware or whether it would actually require you replacing the entire hardware in millions of switches that are currently working just fine in their own docks if you want them to work off of anything else. Well, things like, if I recall, they will work with proper USB. It's just they, they don't follow all the... Uh proper standard. It's really, yeah, reading the whole thing, I was like, wow, it's it's nuts that it's not. Because I at this point, I don't trust it. I won't plug my Switch into anything that isn't the Switch AC adapter mm. or a dock, because I'm like, I cannot possibly think of what could, what could go wrong. So I just prefer not to. <laughs> and that pisses me off, actually. Because they used USB-C, and I'm like, I thought that if you use USB-C, you had to follow the standard. Oh, Nintendo. Apparently not. <laughs> So I don't know whose head's going to roll for that one. But. I want to pay attention to how good this cord is. Let's do that. Like that, that's the ground cable. And that's just straight braiding all Ooh. the way across the cable. Ooh, that is nice. This is, I'm going to have to have a look actually at the end here to see what might have caused that to, uh, to short out. All right. I'm not sure how to. That's oh. unusual for uh, an XLR, like a microphone cable, isn't it? Yeah. You, you, well, most cables. This is. Uh, I've only ever had a part like patch cabling, but never like um, something that's been marked as a microphone cable. <laughs> Where's so, this cable from? I don't know where. You know what? That might have been the one that Ivalen sent us with the uh, with the boom. Oh, oh, that would make sense. Yeah, because he sent us a ninety degree one, and uh, I don't remember it having any specific branding uh, badging on it. But hmm. yeah. unless that one says Peristone on it, if it does, then definitely that's the cable is made. The cable itself appears to be made by Copel. Okay, that K -O -P -U -L. might not be. It. Might not be it then. The Ends are NCMXX by Nutric. Hmm. Then I don't know where we got that one. Because I'm pretty sure the one we got is Peristone, like the boom he sent. Hmm. Oh, I remember having to comb them, these uh, do you wires want, out for do you, the. Do you want the comb? I mean, the, the comb is literally just some hook and loop fastener. Yeah. But. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can deal with the, what I've got here in my hands first. Right. Making progress. Oh, yeah, that'll do. Okay, I think I'm about ready to say that this one is done. Oh! Wow. It's getting nice and close. Ooh. Ah, yes, I can tell how I remembered that I was going to be on stream today, which is I forgot to trim my nails. That's mostly the shield that you've worked on. That is today, fantastic. Oh, thank like you. Just yeah. the kind of slightly glossy mirror face and then like the mm. swishy everything. Yeah. All right. So that's basically three down. Wow. We also have our Mist Weaver. Who, oh, no, wait. I need, there's all kinds of stuff I need to do on, <laughs> on her, actually. But, and then one last one, which is our Hyper. What are they? Hyperion Priest? The I War Priest? I'm not certain. Did you paint the book? Yeah. Jesus. Including inscriptions? Well, I mean, I painted some lines. <laughs> you should see, like, if you go on... If you go online and look for the paint jobs people have done, do people still go to Cool Mini or not? Is that still, like, the I've community hub? Been. I don't know. Anyway, okay, we'll um, finish up a bunch of the little baubles on her outfit. Um, I want to say I used Hawk Turquoise for this. A uh, question from Going Medium in the chat. Mm -hmm. Do you use a clear coat to protect your work? I do. Um, I use... It used to be called just Games Workshop Purity Seal, which was a uh, satin finish. Um, yeah, it's good, it's bulletproof, it's formulated for miniatures that you play with. So, 
it was Games Workshop stuff was frustratingly good because it would have been incredibly satisfying to be like, no, their stuff is garbage and it's overpriced. But it actually was just overpriced <laughs> uh, and a fine product otherwise. Which so, still so is purity seal. Good then to know. It, then it what? Then was it actually overpriced? No, not really. <laughs> not if you're spending this kind of time on things. Boy, that really hurts to say. Then yeah, it's just like no, nah, it's just expensive. So, yeah. But that's what you got to do. to Exactly. Exactly. It's just actually worth it. Are all of my paints dried out and ruined? Probably. Okay, I have just spent the last 20 minutes unweaving a bunch of copper. Oh, wow. So now it's pretty. All, all right. right, well, hold it there so we can see how pretty it is. Are you sure you don't want? Never mind. It's all on. It's done. So it's it's done. Yeah. Nothing needs to be done now. Okay. In fact, pack it up. We're 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 finished. Okay. Now just move all this over to the side so we can. Uh, when I got back into miniatures, I was like, you know what? Forget Games Workshop products. They're just expensive. I'm going to go and go to the hobby shop and pick up some other stuff. And I got a can of uh, Tamiya um, uh, 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 primer. Mm -hmm. And God, was it garbage. Mm. Really? Like, it was just, uh, didn't didn't work. Like, it would be fine if you were doing, like, big slab coats on, like, on, like It models, wasn't even or? good. It, oh. What you want out of your primer is something um, almost porous, right? So it kind of drinks in the paint. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was almost glossy. Hmm. I don't know if it was the weather, maybe it was just high humidity, but even then you kind of want that stuff to be a bit more forgiving. Hmm. I'm using one of my sculpting tools to find if I can find a pocket of usable color in Good here. Holy Would you like to use like an X-Acto knife? Because we have those. Oh, I've got tons of X-Acto knives. I just don't want that you to waste your problem. tools if we've got... Nah. All right. The weave on this is incredible. So much, there's so much string in this. This, th of all the cables that we have that shouldn't have shorted out, this is it. So I guess nothing is safe is what I'm saying. <laughs> Everything you believed in uh, will eventually perish and, and uh, yeah, we will eventually betray you. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll all no, die. This one's a, toast. In a fire or just you know come across and not not pass signal anymore. Mm. You mother! <laughs> what, did, what happened? These are dual insulated wires. Nice. Holy moly. They have a black outer layer of insulation and then a secondary inner layer of white insulation. All right, let's see if I can get a shot of that. Well, now. <sighs> didn't quite come off, did it? Nope. Mm. There we go. <sighs> Would you prefer the different wire stripper? No. Okay. I'll finish this. Yeah, how did... What happened to make a short in this? I, I mean, mean I, I can give an educated theory. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, the... Uh, loading ready run happened to it. <laughs> yeah. Like, we... So naturally, like when I'm winding a cable, um, I will gather as much of the cable as I want, yeah. take it into like a, a dead area, mm -hmm. and I will just basically drop an end on the floor. Like that's what ends up happening, right? You just kind of string everything out, and then you end up dropping an end on the floor. Yeah, you feel around for where the cable wants to wind. Yeah, right? yeah. Right, and you put a half turn into it, and yeah, you go back and forth and back yeah. and forth, and all that kind of stuff. Over but, under, over under. But inevitably, like whenever I'm whenever I'm dropping cable to kind of do something, I'm I never like hold both ends. And mm -hmm. like drop the cable to the ground. It's like I take the end that I need, and then I drop the other end on the ground. Hmm. And generally, that's the other end Ian's holding is the one that I'm dropping on the ground, the one mm -hmm. that goes in the camera. Mm -hmm. I'm never dropping the the one that I'm going to plug into the boom. Yeah. This one I think so. is the one that it's because we've 
<sighs> we'd have to just strain it so much? Well, because we, we occasionally, we're using this one in the bottom of a boom mic that gets play, oh, yeah. laid down. Ooh, I yeah. often see it being laid down on, yeah. Being banged into the ground, the end that the end, that end getting pumped into the ground or into a yeah. wall or something. So, it's just you know it's it's gonna wear. All right, you know what? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, now I need to find out which side is which, which is why we keep our trusty continuity meter. Which of you is pin one? That's the... That's pin three, apparently. Okay. This one is pin two. And the big fatty is ground. Okay, good. So, that's the pin we'll start with. That's the one that goes to the bottom of the triangle. Oh, I feel like I can clean that up a bit better, too. Get rid of some of that string in the way. Wow, this knife is very dull. Very, very dull. All right, let's start by the soldering oh thank you you're welcome hey goodbye Stanley Excelsior true believers this is Stanley coming at you for with another thing I do here at Marvel Comics where I work. Doesn't he just do cameos now? Have you have you told the chat that you think his name is Stanley? No, no. There was there there was someone who uh, whenever they did the whenever Stan Lee would do his voiceovers mm -hmm. on Spider Man and his Amazing Friends, which is the uh, series where he apparently shared a room with Firestarter and Iceman, because <laughs> that's a team up: Spider Man, Firestarter, and Iceman. I think it's Firestorm. Was it? I think it's like, Firestorm. I, I know there is a sta I know there is a Firestorm, mm -hmm. but I'm I, I'm unsure if it, if Firestorm or Firestarter was the one. Probably Firestorm. You're probably right. But he would slur together those two uh, th those those two names, and people would keep saying, keep, people would think Stanley. Right. Mm. So yeah. Hi kids, it's Stanley here from Marvel Comics. Yeah. Firestar. Firestar. Thank you. Uh, Taz the man asks, Dear and I've seen people use electrical tape or extension or extension cords as a person who's rigged things before. Do you recommend a stronger tape than electrical tape? I mean, I would recommend using uh, shrink wrap as m over electrical tape as much as possible. Like heat shrink? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Th thank you. Heat shrink. Also, I've I went to Princess Auto and bought like a four pack of, of electrical tape, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. only thing it sticks to is itself. <laughs> as, oh. you, as you unwind it, and then when you try to stick it back to itself, yeah, it will not. So they just sold you garbage electrical tape. Yeah, I've got I bought a roll of vinyl. In, oh, in well, that's colors. good. Yeah, yeah, that's handy. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what you need. So, be sure you buy name brand quality <laughs> electrical tape. Now, I guess, is the thing we have to watch out for. Yeah. Oh, wow. They did not skimp on the solder either. Uh, where's my knife? But I'm definitely going to recreate their use of heat shrink here on these mm. in an effort to make, make it nice and clean. 
Good God, yeah, I hope I can get these uh, desoldered without just completely melting this plug. Hmm. Well, where's my solder sucker? Let's begin. All right. We oh. There we go. That started it. That got most of it. Hopefully enough to release the rest of it. Uh, what was that Tame Impala song? Sometimes I feel like we only go backwards. <laughs> no. Ooh, wow, that's a nice big hunk. We did good, friends. Okay, you know what? Too many hands. I think the hunk was actually just slightly too big for the... Uh, nozzle? Yep. The nozzle. Do not look directly at the nozzle. Uh oh. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, you heard that that guy land, didn't you? Yeah. Wow. That was that was solder. Yep. A nugget. L lead solder. Probably. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll find it later. Flush sure. that one down the toilet. <laughs> Disappear. I didn't realize it works on just like a big suck of air. Yep, it's literally just a piece of vacuum. Yeah. A piece of vacuum. One of these days, linguists will look back on the series and shake their heads. Speaking of a piece of vacuum, I yes. fixed my vacuum hose the other day. Congratulations on your car? Uh, no, on, on my vacuum. Oh. On my actual household vacuum. I, uh,. I thought this thing has to come apart because a human built it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found a single screw, I took it out, and then the whole handle came apart. And I'm like, great. And the whole problem on it was that the uh, area where you plug in the, um, uh, you plug the power nozzle in to the, to the hose handle, mm -hmm. the, the jack, the power jack on the inside had just been like pushed backwards over and over and over throughout the years. So mm. you could no longer get the, get like a firm connection. So it would sit in there for a bit and then it would wiggle its way out. Oh. And so I built a leaf spring out of an old uh, loyalty card that I had mm -hmm. by chopping it into small pieces and then like layering them together. And uh, yeah, put the whole hmm. thing back together and now I have an incredibly solid connection and it's really fun to vacuum. <laughs> it's fun to vacuum. It again. is my, I have such a good vacuum. <laughs> Be your delight. <laughs> I, I got so excited when I bought that thing like four years ago or three that, years yeah, ago. Yeah, I remember yeah. You, you being like... I was just like, my God, guys, I bought this wicked new vacuum. And it's like, oh, my, I'm so old. You got a really good deal on a vacuum. I did. All right. I'm going to make a third hand. Show off. You have a third hand. I mean, I do, but it's not the, not big enough to oh, be okay. a third hand. Would you like to borrow a human's third hand? No. Okay. <laughs> no, not when it comes to hot things. Okay. I would. <laughs> there's this great line in Transmetropolitan where they're standing in a bar looking out the window as this like enormous storm rolls in. 
And one of the assistants says, I wouldn't put a dog out in weather like this. And Spider Jerusalem says, I would. <laughs> Thus perfectly <laughs> illustrating the difference between Spider Jerusalem and the rest of humanity. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Be sure to clip that shot. Okay, I think that's all I need to suck. Yes, hello, did I say something funny? Well, not on purpose. <laughs> N never on purpose. Can you just um, can you just solder the wire to that wrench instead and we can try using that? <laughs> As an XLR cable? Just yeah. clamp it on the end of the <laughs> microphone and see what happens. This is where the third hand will actually be somewhat useful. Let's back off the camera here. Actually, you know what? Okay, so I've got everything on there that needs to be on there. This clip can come off independently, so it's safe. That's there, that's there for strain relief. Solder is not in my mouth yet. There it is. Because of the... Is this the equivalent of mouth pipetting? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, it kind of is. God damn it. He holds it in a protective case. I, I so told he's... him that the only rule is that he can't inhale the smoke with his nose while he's doing it. So he has like... to freebase it? Yeah. <laughs> right, that's what I'm missing. I was going to put some tiny bits of... Uh... Shrink tubing on there. Mm. Very small. Very small. That is too small, maybe. Just to keep them from shorting against each other? Yeah. I mean, that's hey, that was what was in here originally, so who am I to argue with them? Uh, let's... Uh, Cam, we've got a notice me senpai from the chat saying, I am painting Death Guard. Ooh. And it's from Silver Kestrel Studios. Good luck. What are, uh, what are Plague Marines like these days? Still Toughness 5 over there? Hey, ooh. Oh. The answer is yes. Good, good. Death Guard were always... I mean, I didn't like them immediately at first, but I've warmed to them over the years. <laughs> I feel like I get them now. Okay. Exciting times. Can finally use both hands to solder. Oh, look at the smoke. Lead smoke. Oh no, that's just rosin. Lead rosin. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Gundam character. It lead does. smoke or red rosin? Lead rosin sounds like yeah, a Gundam no, totally. character. Yeah, absolutely. God, what was the dumbest name? It was Hard Femur. Char. Yeah. No, the Hard Femur was a character. You have Char. to be kidding me. Not, I'm not yeah. kidding you. Not this. And this. Remember, this is a name that he said is not as dumb as Quattro Bagina. Good oh, point. Oh, God, right. Yep, yep. I forgot that. Bless every translator who, who stuck by Bajina. Yep. But yeah, hard femur is pretty dumb. <laughs> like, like, that's not even trying. Like when the Transformers people would have been like, nah. <laughs> Ace Z on pilot. Or so I'm led to believe. Okay, 
So I'm just trimming a bit of the this uh, shrink tube because it got a little hot from the soldering iron, and now it won't wouldn't have covered the uh, the thing anymore. What if I, I slide the camera over to you, Ian, are you able to show that off to the crowd? I mean, yeah, we can just show that off right there. Give me one second to get that in focus. Oh, look at that. It's the first join. Actually, we might as well seal that up while we've got stuff out of the way, too. If we can, we can get it over that bit of a... Oh, come on. Are you too small already? If you are, I'm not going back in here with more. Okay, one of these will have to be left uh, unprotected. Which one? Uh, the, the one that doesn't need protection. The braid? Probably the one that I'm working on right now. While, you were, so while you were painting your figures, I was soldering the braid. <laughs> this is why you gave me a mic. Fuck. <laughs> we didn't give you a mic. You got one. You just went and took one. When is the braid? Oh, when I'm is light the braid? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, that was just a lie, BH. <laughs> 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 Next up, this chuckle. Am I, am I being dragged in chat? <laughs> ah, chat loves you. That's... Let's hear more about Gundam. Uh, <laughs> Beej, as a longtime follower of Turn A. Oh, no. What's your favorite character name? That is stupid. I can't remember <laughs> everyone's stupid names in that show. Because um, it's Diana and Kiel. Yeah. And they're the, they're the twins from another mother. Um... And there's uh, uh, Lorna. Most people didn't have dumb names in that series. That's true. It was all the it was all the uh, situations. Uh, maybe the mechs actually had the yeah, dumb the, names. It's fair. Yeah. Did, did Turney have the dumbest looking yes. mech? Well, I'd, the one with the little mustache. Yeah, yeah that was the Turney kind of. <laughs> yep. God, I'd, that thing sucked. I looked at that and I'm like, I'm not watching this. Yeah, but but what the about, show's really good. What about the Clop, <laughs> which I believe is one of them. So, to be fair to Turn A Gundam, it happens hundreds of years. I love Turn A Gundam, and it still had a mech called a clock. Yes! <laughs> like, that's... They didn't call any of them, like, the Goof or the Zaku or any of that, okay, right? But like, other, you knew that's what they were. But... Other Far Future Gundams? The Elf Bullock. <sighs> oh, yeah, Elf Bullock. So, oh, like, what? Sandra Bullock, or...? <laughs> Now, let's be honest, the best mech names come from uh, Reconquista and G, where you can have the Jackknife, piloted by Mick Jack. No, that's the series with the Elf Bullock. Oh, is it? Yes, you're right. Wait, which, wait, which Gundam is this? Uh, the rival masked opponent drives the, the Elf Bullock. For a while. Yeah, what's the name of the Gundam series? Oh, Reconquista and G. That is the same series. Okay, yes. fair enough. I mean, Gundam is just really weird because it has all these dumb names and then it just shows you half an hour of, like, mechs crushing cockpits while Gore shoots out of them. Yep. And then three episodes in a row of uh, tense negotiations. Wall War is bad. They really like squishing cockpits in, in Gundam. It's effective. <laughs> I guess so. So... Sh I guess shooting the cockpit also seems to be quite popular. <laughs> but it's just like, oh, that guy exploded. He's not coming back from that. Next episode, the triumphant return of that guy. Wasn't there, what was the one where they actually, like, they showed uh, that, uh, what was her name? I forget her name, but they actually showed her getting melted inside her cockpit oh. by that huge beam. <laughs> yes, that was in, uh... Oh. She finally had like a moment of lucidity and was instantly killed. Double O eight, uh, re ninety six got a unicorn. Yes, 
Unless you're talking about different one uh, women it's who possible. got possible. <laughs> Uh, you're thinking about that fighter clone, the new type clone that was in like, red hair. Yeah, long red hair. They all thirteen. Uh, wait, is, Valentine. Blue, what was her name? Blue twelve. Blue. Yeah. Is this is this the same one that 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 JPEG series is from? Where it's like, aha, I'm a genius. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, that's Rekin Gista. Okay. Okay. My favorite is in Zeta when a man, when a person drives a plane directly into the cockpit of another person, mm. and just cr you you get to see a man crushed by the nose of an aircraft. It, oh, gross! In, in Wrecking Gista, that I'm a genius. Oh no, flies a plane into his father. <laughs> is his father an especially large person? <laughs> is his father made of metal? No, his father was like the prime minister. I'm sorry, Gundanium. Or ah. president of jerk holes. It's true. It's a very odd series. Okay, last one. Nope, we need to weight that down just a bit. Which is why I have this out for clamping. Okay, and then just a bunch of solder in there. Ooh. There we go. That seems like a good connection. I think we might be able to call that a cable. I'm going to swing over and we're going to have a look. My idea of uh, heat shrinking did not exactly turn out as planned, but some of these can get covered. Walk us through why. Because the, the problem here is that I think these heat shrink tubes were actually just too small to get over the ridges in these uh, pieces, but there's not any play here going on, so I think we're pretty safe to leave it as is. Okay. All uh, right, now to just do a quick continuity test before we button it up. Uh, so where's my other end? Right there. Let's make sure we're getting things correctly. So one, two, one. Let's get that in there. One, two, one is good. Two, two, two is also good. And finally, three, two, three. And even when you flex the cables, there's no difference, eh? Yep. Wicked. We good. Well done. Nicely done, Ian. You saved us some money. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, I mean, we'll have to stand closer to the camera, but... I mean, a couple inches. I think you, I think you can handle that? I hope I, I will. Think, I think we can handle that. Now, let's see if I can remember how to put this all together. Uh, at this point of success, would you like to take a break? Now seems like yeah. a very good time for us to take a break. Maybe, yeah, yeah, right now. Right now. Don't go away. There is going to be more Tinker Tailor Solar Fry hmm. after this. Welcome back to Tinker Tailor Solar Fry, where we are, y yes, that's the right one. We are continuing on with the painting of our Silver Tower miniatures. Yeah. And uh, I'm putting together the last bits of an XLR cable before I retrofit cables on a set of driving simulator pedals. Ooh. We've already so built this fancy little doodad, uh, an extension cord for USB. Sorry, you were, you were about oh, to Oh, I say. was actually just curious what time it was. I haven't been paying attention. Oh, it's currently 7.25. Lots of oh, time. Is the, is the clock yeah, we have up? this handy thing. On. Okay, here. Oh, we have a clock. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> it's, it's sorry. I'm just completely illiterate, as it turns out. <coughs> it's a shot clock and a clock, and a, it's it's very handy. Mm -hmm. Beach should be pleased with himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good work, Beach. I had the idea to um, hook up. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the reverse angle of what our setups like right now, but we have an old iPad first gen, 
And I was like, if we could get that on our monitoring setup, we could use a clock app, and we couldn't find a really good one. And so Paul says, well, I can just write one. And then he, mm. he wrote uh, a web app that just not only shows what time it is, but also every time we switch scenes, it right. shows how long you've been on the scene. And it's so handy. <laughs> yeah. Paul really outdid himself. Yeah. It's, it's just so killer, so... And then James was instrumental in getting the uh, right bits of mount together so we could actually get the damn thing mounted. And, I mean, what else do you do with an iPad that's stuck on iOS 6? Right, right. <laughs> right, it becomes an emplacement. Yeah, so it's like, well, uh, this is the last thing we can probably do with it, so let's do this. It keeps time now. And it keeps time. Okay. Now, one of these days we should take a... Take a picture of what, what the opposite see? angle, yeah, what we see, and we can tweet it again. I can talk more about my cast. Actually, I did that. I talked about my casters on Twitter. <laughs> I was all excited about my casters. Well, you did good work, Beach. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. That looks weird. Yeah, it is weird. Oh, there we go. You have to push down all the way, and then you can get the locking ring in. And then you can spin it around. Can you just jam all that down in that direction. And then we slide this piece over top of it. I do have to say, I was, I, I was, I'm happy that I got a chance to actually get into this cable, because I've always wondered how this one was hooked up. And now I know. Now hopefully I'll never have to do this again. What do you think of the engineering of it? It's nifty. It's, it's very clever, and it's, uh, it's very sturdy. Well, I guess these things need to be kind of hard-wearing, don't they? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had many quarter-inch patch cables that are not as sturdy as I'd like them to be. No. Mm -hmm. or get, you know, like playing guitar and whatnot. So seeing something like this, I'm like, oh, wow, they've really put a lot of extra bits into that. Like, I'm super, if anything else, just really impressed with the uh, level of... Uh, like, the level of quality in the actual cable itself. Hmm. Like, well, yeah, it's insulated to hell and back, right? Like, normally you just get those three... Three bare wires. Yeah, you get three bare wires, or maybe maybe you know, two of them are insulated, and you get a piece of string. Newspaper rolled up between. Yeah, and in this one you're getting just oodle. Like, you're, you're getting that braided uh, ground cable. And then you're also, on top of that, getting uh, a braided bunch of, just a whole ton of string mm. that seems to be like press-formed around everything inside. I'm wondering, oh, that's why. Because the, uh, this braided stuff is getting in the way of the threads. See if we can jam that up there even higher, so it doesn't get in the way. Yeah, there's no guarantee that it won't get in the way. For the sake of our viewers, can you turn your fingers translucent? I will do my best. Okay. I mean, I'm, I already avoid the sun as a matter of course, so. <laughs> oh yeah, this has to be jammed up too. That strain reliever. Okay. That should allow us to get that plugged in fully. OK. 
Okay, that's it. We have a chord. Hooray. Is that second or third success of the night? That's, well, if we're counting your uh, figure, which I do believe we should, that's Ooh. third. All right. Go team. Yeah, now if we can get, if we can get to four, this may be a record-setting episode. I'm looking forward to it. All right. So step one is going to be getting the cable out of this. Now, let's talk for a second about why I'm swapping these cables. This is the cable that the Thrustmaster comes with, which is the wheel I have. Uh, again, all these pedals are the same. They're just a series of potentiometers hooked up to uh, wires. There's very little actual circuitry in here, if any. The problem is, this is the uh, this is the connector. It's an offset RJ11. Uh, RJ12, I believe. RJ12, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But it is offset, which is not normal and not easy to get, and I don't want to have to recrimp this. Now I could buy a, an adapter from a uh, British company uh, for twenty bucks. It's not much, but I don't want to spend twenty bucks and wait for shipping. I want it now, and for no money. Mm. I already spent twenty bucks on the pedals. God damn it. So let's uh, crack this open and uh, get to removing some wiring. I do have, thankfully, a wiring diagram for the, uh, the convert converter. So instead of making a convert, I'm just going to take the cable from this and put it in the other ones. Hmm. All right, so let's start by unscrewing everything. <laughs> this little plastic thing as a tray. All right, I think our mist weaver might be nearing completion. Ooh. Finally. That's definitely another, uh, another success. Arclight uh, Dynamo points out, why is everything Ian owns named Thrustmaster or Power Fist or something else? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, tech designers in the 90s had a lot of unexamined issues, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, I discovered this brand new key mechanical keyboard design. It's from a company called Dong Jammers. <laughs> mm. It must be good. Yeah, they're only worked, wired up to work with Wangs, but I've... Oh, mm. well, that's too bad. I've managed to create an adapter. I wanted to try that brand, but I, d I went with a mother. I mean, what did I say? I... <laughs> I mean, let's let... Uh, I'm not sure if we've gone over this on stream already, but uh, Princess Auto is moving their in-house brand away from an emphasis on Power Fist yes. towards their new... What, they, what they're calling premium line of tools, Pro Point. Yeah. Which is way less edible, or Freudian, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Powerfist is definitely like their entry level thing. And if you want to buy uh, a drill that's going to last you maybe longer than three months, I mean, I'm being a little facetious, but yeah, you can go Pro Point. It has more metal. <laughs> Pro Point. It has more, more metal. metal. Oh, wait. What was Canadian Tires brand for a long time? Mastercraft. Yeah, they suck. Well, they okay, so they have three brands now. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So Mastercraft, you you've heard of, that was their all everything they make was said Mastercraft on it. Mm -hmm. Now they have three brands. Mastercraft is their uh, standard line, which is actually quite good. Really? Yeah, very reliable stuff overall, uh, but you know, still only comes with like a kind of a normal warranty or whatever. Right. Their premium line is called Mastercraft Maximum. <laughs> really? Yes. And the maximum is is spelled out in, in very, like... In maximum font? Yeah, it is. And uh, the benefit of Mastercraft Maximum is that they have uh, almost everything is lifetime warranty. Okay. Oh, so they're going after the Craftsman line. Exactly. They, right, they, yeah, Sears, yeah. Yeah, and I have taken stuff to Sears uh, and said, hey, so this came out of my Craftsman socket set, and they're like, sure did. And I'm like, yeah, so... Can I have a replacement? And they're like, yeah, just uh, just go grab one off the shelf. And it was like, go grab a loose socket off the shelf. And they're just, yeah, because you, you're this one cracked, we'll give you a brand new one, not a problem. Mm. And just walk out with it. Just, yeah, I showed them my whole set, and they were like, we well, don't get a whole new set, but you do get the new socket. I'm mm. like, that's all I want. So, 
Um, but yeah, I have a set of impact, rent, uh, impact sockets from MasterGraph Maximum because uh, they were cheap. And I needed impact sockets to take the um, uh, uh, control arms off of my car. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up not using them at, ultimately. I'm sorry, Beach. I'm just like. That's no, it's okay. I'm supposed to find you. Mm. You have to get into a comfortable position. I think I'm ready to uh, say that this one is Dunzo. Yeah, I'd say so. So, which little dongles and highlights were you working on just to upgrade? Oh, uh, the ones along the edge of her skirt. And I also, it used to have like purple highlights, which I didn't like, so I made them kind of like this bluish gray mm. to imply that like there was a bit of her um, uh, uh, mist going in. Okay. That is me doing that to the camera. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was melting or yeah. something. <laughs> I was like, why is that moving down? Oh, the camera's moving. Hmm. Okay, so that's two miniatures completed. What do we want to do next? We have the, we have the dwarven um, slayer. We have slayer. Uh, the, I guess like the dark elf rogue type. We've got the big monster. <laughs> we will do at some other point. And then the other hero we have is the barbarian. Barbarians seems like there could be a lot of flesh on there to deal with. Yeah, well, like, I mean, with the Hero Quest Barbarian, I painted him to try to look like that he smelled like beef jerky. <laughs> um, I think, I want to say I succeeded. What are the other characters supposed to smell like? Uh, well, considering in the lore, the Dwarven Slayers make their mohawks using bear fat, Oof. I'm assuming, uh, like, whatever sluices out of the bottom of a slaughterhouse for this guy. <laughs> And considering this guy's wearing flayed skin, he probably also smells at best like beef jerky. Mm. So I've got this but, open. Um, I'm assuming he smells a bit like 3 a.m. at a leather bar. Pork rinds. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you got that a party in? Got this open. Um, so the question is, do I just want to s snip the cable and reconnect them Resolder them in future if I need to, and I think the answer is yes. To be let's honest, let's dangerously. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right, I'm keeping my um, water and water <laughs> in tandem here. It's good. I like that there is a single piece of tape that was clearly put in place until the glue dried. Huh. So we'll just pry that out there. And so the uh, the entry level Canadian Tire brand. Oh mm -hmm. right, because there's one more. Is Jobmate. <laughs> Jobmate. 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 So that when you show up at your first job with this hammer. Mm -hmm. Hey, good job, mate. Yeah, Jobmate is your um, weekend warrior tools. They're the ones that you're like this. This one is good enough. Yeah, this is good for hanging a picture or like. Assembling an IKEA chair. Exactly. Right. Jobmate is your tool friend who's fun to be with. Yep. We got a. It's it's funny because you can see the difference because if you go buy sawhorses, for example, jobmates are made of uh, nylon. They're made of plastic. Huh. And huh. Master Mastercraft Maximums are made of a lot of metal. And the Mastercraft regulars are made from just enough metal that it's easy to cut through, but not too hard. Yeah. Exactly. I recently sliced uh, the uh, four inches off the legs of each one of a uh, Mastercraft sawhorse to make a stand for my uh, for my wheel. Yeah. Hmm. So it was you know couch height. Here we go. Bam. Committed. A little anticlimactic, but but yeah, you're committed to that now. Yep. I have I have a variety of tools in my house from all three lines. Why did you cut that so far back from where you had been digging it out? So that I could actually reconnect it if want me to be outside of the uh, the, the, the thing. Ah. I was hoping there might be some sort of thing on a, on a circuit board that would be able to be just like unplugged. Oh. No, no, turns out it's literally just wires directly soldered onto the potentiometers. You should, you should epoxy a breadboard in, inside that thing. Or whatever. I mean, you're not using those anymore, right? You're not anymore. You're using them. Mm. Okay. Now I'm 
to understand that the best way to do this is to have a box just to uh, support this with so that I can leave it like this. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have something like that. Oh, well, I'll just have a quick look. Unless we have one of those cubes assembled. I'll also let you guys in on the secret here. How about this? Oh, that'll work perfectly. I want to uh, mention, tell everyone out there, one of the reasons I was excited about these, these uh, wheels, in addition to having a clutch pedal, which I'm happy about, it's got a pop-out set of spikes pointed in this direction, so that when you set it down, to the spikes push into oh. the carpet, thereby <laughs> you don't have to keep pulling uh, pulling the pedals back towards you. Thereby your, ruining your carpet. With your heel right. on the... <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Which I, did, which I got very good at doing during the Lurmans. Now we should have just taped those in place. <laughs> now that I think about it, we should have just <laughs> got the gaff out and just... Okay, that's got to come up a bit. Okay. Do you want a non-slip pad? Uh, no, this should be fine. Yeah, this will be fine for what it is right now. Do you want to just tape it to the box? Keep it from sliding, or? Uh, no, this will be fine. Okay. I just now have a lot, a lot, a lot of screws to take out. How many do you see? Tell me what your elf eyes see. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Still not as many as that laptop. Eighteen, twenty. Exactly as nuts as the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Why twenty screws? I don't know. Oh my god. Do you need to remove all of them? Yes. Okay. What do I want to assemble next? Uh, you've done the Mist Weaver. Yep. You did the Knight. Yeah, we've done the... Okay, so we've got Knight, Mage, Healer, and then we've kind of got three choices for, for melee DPS. We have the Tenebriel Shard, who is the, the Dark Elf-like rogue. We've got the Dark Oath Champion, who is the Barbarian. And then we've got the Fire Slayer Doomseeker who is the Dwarven uh, Slayer. Dwarf! Dwarf. Dwarf. I mean, that Dwarf. just sounds rad. So. Yeah. yeah. Dwarf. Dwarf it is. He goes on a 32 mil base. Just one of these guys. And... Pork Dwarf. <laughs> Somebody in chat just yelled at him and I'm like, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's a sound description. Porkyalonos Dorf. My remembering my high school Spanish is two pork burritos, please. <laughs> I didn't take Spanish in high school. Mm. You just stood outside the classroom a lot. <laughs> Not even that. No. I didn't take a language in high school. Really? Yeah. Really? How well, did you get away with that? You weren't forced to. We were forced to take languages in, uh, goodbye, everything. Do you want a non-stick pad for that? Can I maybe, like, okay. tape it to the box? Sure, sure. Let's okay. let's get a non-stick pad. This, this and then we'll tape it to the box. The non-slip pad, I think yes. I meant. Fuck. <laughs> Loud sound. Okay, here's this. And okay. there should be a, um, there should be a pad... Sorry. Oh, yes. Right over here. Great. There's lots of that. Thank you, Beach. You're welcome. I'm sorry for the loud sound, Gary. <laughs> loud sound, me scared. Is that going to keep it from sliding or not? Not really. No. Oh. I feel like we need something that's slightly narrower box wise if we're going to use a box for this. Okay. I'll see what I can find. BJ is going to find something. Uh, 
Mew Yabby, uh, news on Lermans is that Lermans is indeed going to happen this year. Oh, exciting. Yep. Just need to, we need to talk about it internally. But as to who is going to be involved and trade, yeah. Sure. Do you want to empty that box? Nope. Perfect. This is exactly what I needed. When is Le Mans? Uh, it's going to be in May, I believe, or May? No, June. June, mm. right. It's uh, technically scheduled for a... I think it's happening over the weekend of uh, GP Vegas. Oh, okay. Well, sure I mean... That is... Hmm. But yeah, we didn't have to take uh, lang extra languages in high school. Junior high, yes, but not high. I was in French from kindergarten to grade 12. Good God. Uh, it was called program, Le Programme Cadre de Francais, which was 100% uh, of the time in kindergarten and up until grade 7 when I had my first English class. Um, all And then... Le about French immersion content in high school, except in grade, I think up until grade 10, I had um, all of my science and math classes were also in French. French. Whew. Damn. That would probably explain your deeper understanding. Eh, I don't know. It might just explain my poor spelling. <laughs> and my pretentiousness. hey -o. think up to grade six mm. and then in grade seven I think there was an optional program in, in in somewhere in town and I have no idea how they made that work by the time you got to grade nine though it was like nope you're, mm. you're done though they would let you if you took French immersion they would let you take French in high school and destroy all of your classmates <laughs> and, which we were never graded on a curve so it was fine but mm. And I knew a guy who did that. He was like, I need to take another option. I'm taking French. And I'm like, you were in French immersion for six years. You destroy us. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, well. I need the easy, I, not even need, I want the easy A. Yeah. I mean, I was bad at it, right? Um, I was, program COD was supposed to be for Francophones only. Mm. And um, I think I was the last year, I was in the last year where it was, uh, enrollment was open to non-Francophone families. Mm -hmm. I decided I want to catch you doing what you're doing with uh, hmm? with a little dude in your hand. I'm going to oh, yeah. watch you while you're doing that. Well, we're doing some basic assembly here. No, come back! That's why it smelled that. Acetone? Yes. Yeah, like, hmm. More free monomers up here than I, mm. I'm used to. Oh, God, my fingernails. Would it make you feel better if you saw how bad mine were? No. Yeah, like, we could, <laughs> we could make this, like, a, a comparison thing. Yeah. Why does everything have to be a competition in this office? <laughs> Okay, and then what we're doing here is um, we apply the glue to both halves. I'm using liquid cement here because I prefer liquid cement to super glue. It gives a superior hold hmm. uh, compared to super glue on plastic miniatures because it actually melts the plastic and then it reforms. Hmm. It means you need to be very uh, sparing, though. Absolutely. So it isn't like contact cement. It's it's cement. Yes. Yeah, it's it's cement, um, cement. Yeah. Contact cement. I always understood was you put a little on one thing, a little on another thing. Mm. You wait until they get tacky, and then you stick them together, and that's what's holding the pieces is the bits that got tacky. Yeah. No. Here it's actually melting the surface of the plastic. Interesting. And then they, when the solvent evaporates, it binds uh, again. Yeah, it binds. Um, and then. So he's got, currently, all of his limbs. Um, then I need to cut off more pieces to put on. He looks very unusual right now. Mm. Some sort of rock golem. Yeah. 
The uh, the dwarves in Warhammer have this really amazing aesthetic. They're, I think they were actually quite um, uh, probably had a much bigger effect on pop dwarves than people uh, give it credit for. Maybe I don't know. Maybe also orcs. I I don't know how influential Warhammer has been on fantasy, like pop fantasy. Probably quite. Like it's been around a while, like thirty years, hasn't it? Yeah, you, you can't be around for that long and not have some influence on the culture. Mm hmm There we go. I think that's finally all of them. Yes, there we go. Great. Oh, good. That's, that's nice. There, there were some friends who got trapped in there. Oh, let's have a look at the friends. Oh. Oh. No, let's not. We found them. No. Damn. Now I've done this to myself. That one is A, that one is B, that one is C. Are we talking like hamster friends or? Oh no, I was meaning like uh, little uh, insect friends. Yeah, insect friends. Okay. Oh man, these are just on plates too. That's great. I mean, you can really tell. Sorry, I guess Games Workshop is using a lot of like CAD designing now um, because you can tell that these traditionally a miniature like this mm -hmm. would have been made up of a pair of legs and a torso and two arms and then a head, right? That you would put on top of it. Right. This is a torso and an arm and a leg and then another arm and then one of the legs. And the head is in two parts, one of which is the mohawk in 2D okay. and the back of the neck. The other part is the face with the mustache coming off. So it's been split up into all these 2D planes. Wow. Right? Which is counterintuitive, but makes for very dynamic looking models. Unless they're, you know, unless they get too into it and realize the, you know, the model is miniature might just be a little over sculpted and hard to look at. <laughs> right, this is a cool miniature, but there's a lot going on on it. Yeah. Before I sniff, I'm just going to take some continuity uh, and see if I can use any of the cable that came with or if this was discarded because it doesn't. Uh... No, the cables work. Yeah. Uh, I have looked up a wiring damp diagram. We lose something. We lost something. Oh no! Uh, continue on. <laughs> Those were essential. Uh, well, it's decorative. So, I guess. I guess. Okay. <laughs> oh Jesus! I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess. Cor Corey was more laughing at what I allowed to happen, which was <laughs> which was I let go of the camera. And it was like, well, time to look at the ceiling. Huh. So, yeah. B just falling over a lot just today. In, just, just in case, you know, anyone out there is thinking that, I wonder if these guys are professional enough to show up my bar. <laughs> just, uh... <laughs> I haven't seen that person in the chat for, for a while, so... Um... Maybe they were like, oh, God, these guys are utter nerds. They might have to get back to, like, actually working the bar. All right, so... I've never been friends with an actual publican. Oh, yeah? We, we, made, uh, we made brief friends in... Uh, our anime club made brief friends with a guy who ran a restaurant and bar. Uh, and then, they, then you filmed that ad there. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Garuga mesh. Like, <laughs> Holy you shit. You say that, but That's... that is so close to home. Like, yeah. Really? Oh my god, wait, you're thinking of the other place. Oh. No, 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 just that ad. Oh yeah, that ad, okay, fair enough. I thought for a second you might have been thinking of the one in Grand Prairie. 
that you guys Ew. you guys kind of we, we went to this one Japanese restaurant so often that uh, they kind of got to know everybody over time I think a mm. little bit yeah no I was thinking about the Guru Mesh yeah ad. okay that specifically just you know us being West Coast anime yeah. convention attendees yeah man why did that was SakuraCon right sure was why did they never just own that because I think I would, if like if I would have if I was them, I'd be selling like Garugamesh everything. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Hire that guy. <laughs> Just own it. Yep. Instead of trying to bury it. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So apparently I only have six. Six uh, wires that I need to reconnect. Red, orange, black. That is white and black. And that is green and red, black. Actually, Beach. Yes. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Just get oh my god, that my pores. in focus. Let me get that in focus. Oof. That is What? Oh yeah, it's a face. Huh. Oh my god. That is how the computer decided to split up that that miniature. That is wild. I mean, I love the mohawk and everything, but yeah, I did not mm -hmm. realize that's what he was going to go for. Huh. Yeah. So you said bear fat? Yeah, apparently. I mean, that's what it said in the stories. I think we'll end up soldering this. Felix and Gotrick. That was the name of the, the adventuring pair. Do they provide a, um, uh, a sequence of... Please do this, then do this, when you're assembling these things, or? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's an instruction sheet. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. Okay. Hang on. Oh, neat. Cool. Yeah, huh. pretty straightforward, right? Okay. It just seemed like such advanced wizardry that I, I was kind of like, Oh, I'd never figure this out, right? Because they just like, they just look like lumps on the sprue. They're like I said, it's not very count, not very intuitive. Right. Cool. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Smash TCG. Baldor looks a little, little over designed. He's a little busy. He's a little hard to look at. That's one person. Yeah, that's one person. Oh, okay. I thought it was someone giving him a hug from behind. <laughs> Okay. He's got a chair, but oh. like, oh, okay. how would you remember to put on all of those things when you get up? I assume you have a bunch of like babies with wings and skull heads flying around you all the time, like dressing you. Jesus, I saw I saw I lost it at the other day, <laughs> where um, where uh, none of those were English words ten years ago, yeah, right? <laughs> I saw I lost it the other day. Where a uh, where when he runs in, he's wearing like a Space Marine helmet, mm -hmm. and in the fourth panel, there is a there is a winged fetus flying around, and he looks so happy staring at the winged fetus that's flying above the bed. And I was kind of like, Warhammer's a hell of a thing. Holy shit! Yeah. My um my personal metric for how inventive a science fiction setting is. Mm -hmm is, does it lose to Warhammer 40k in a fight? <laughs> right? Because, like, Star Trek, crushed. Yeah. Right? That's fair. Star Wars, probably also crushed. Um, the culture keeps w the Warhammer galaxy in a aquarium. <laughs> right? And they think they're kind of interesting and wonder if they should interfere in it. Right? Uh, anything by... Uh, Nihei. <laughs> oh, wow. It's just like, because Nihei just has like Hand of God mode yeah. operate occasionally, right? Like, okay. you know, orcs crash into the mega structure and just get deleted. <laughs> okay. 
now to do some very, very fiddly solder work. As soon as I can find the other cable that I'm supposed to be working. There you are. Yay. Oh, neither of these has good cable, though, so. Hooray. I guess I should plug that back in. Keep ah. it from flopping about. Thank you. I can use that. Pull the flop. Yep. Oh, yeah. Get some gaffy tape on that. Now, this is a question that I have to ask myself. Mm -hmm. Do I glue on his face? before painting his, his chest. Because look at what his face and beard cover. His entire chest. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that comes last, doesn't it? Like, do you want to worry about trying to get in there and... Or will it save you time because he's covering so much? This is all still under there. And I think you'd be able to see it. I think he, the problem is his, like... Uh, frontal region mm -hmm. down near his hips. Yeah, I would agree. Like right under here between these braids. Yeah. Mm. There's just enough, enough depth there to really like give me some fits, I think. Do you think it's better to just like go over it with the color? Like obviously you don't have to do like, any detail. Maybe. maybe. Uh, I need to see if what other... Oh, yeah, he actually has another lock of hair that you just glue onto the side of his beard. Oh, my God. Do we have a pencil or pen nearby? Yes, we do. We have a whole collection of them. Great, thank you. I, I need to make some notes on which is clutch or which wire belongs to which. You want a pencil or a pen? A uh, pencil's fine. Thank you. Interesting fact. Uh, so on the petals themselves, you can see... C, B, and A written on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what those are for? Uh, C is for the clutch. Mm -hmm. B is Break. for the brake. And A is for the accelerator. Right. Okay. Good. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Okay. It's nice that they have them written on there like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not just pedal A, pedal B, pedal C. It's yeah. like no, they wouldn't literally be, stand for. Wouldn't that. it be an utter bastard if they were backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, flip it over. No, that, that's right. Yeah, you flip up that way. Accelerator okay, on the yeah. side, brake in the middle, clutch on yeah, the side. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I started saying that thinking that I was going to get to the end and screw it up on purpose for you and realized that, no, I'm actually falling into their trap. Hmm. Okay, so green is clutch. C is for choke. You want to let out the choke so that the carburetor can actually get enough. We don't let the choke out anymore. Don't let the choke out? Who let the choke out? Wait, no, that's a different thing. <laughs> choke yourself, not Choke yourself. <laughs> Use the, the little nozzle thing next to the engine. Pull it out. Show me your start face. Choke herself. Not my hand, her hand. <laughs> uh, actually, if we get, if we have time, I might do one more mod on this, which is to remove a tiny piece of rubber from inside the brake. Rubber, you say? Yeah, it's it's put there to make it feel like it's supposed to be like a, a regular oh, brake okay. pedal that gets harder as you push on. Mm. But it's just like, okay, you've braked enough, and now you now encounter some deformable rubber. Mm. So instead you're going to replace it with some sort of like buckling spring? I'm just going to replace it with nothing. Oh, uh, the, damn. The spring and it will be enough. I've if... got this cherry MX red that I'm going to put at the bottom of my brake so I know when I... MX red? <laughs> Blue. Wow. The one with the actual like noisemaker that goes yes. wee when you like... And then green so I can actually have some force to go up against. <laughs> There's some dumbass switches out there. To get clear. You know, brown. I, I regret ever buying browns. I bought them to be nice to my office mates. It was the wrong choice. To hell with your office mates. Yeah. Type properly. Getting 
getting, I'm your office mate. <laughs> getting cherry rojas that like play the Mexican hat dance every time you key to press. <laughs> I think that's Dixie, <laughs> but yeah. The ones with noisemakers inside just yeah. irritate me. They're very... <laughs> just every time you tap, it's a, it's a, it's an uh, MGS game... Uh, um, wait, no, MLG, that's what it yeah, is, right? MLG air horn? Yeah. It's, it's one of those, th those breath-operated noisemakers. All right, Razor, if you're listening, and I know you are. Uh, I will mute you. <laughs> we, we own this idea, but we would like to sell it to you. Which one is the... Well, black is the... Uh, okay, so we've got green, orange, and white are the... Uh, so that means... Yeah, black is clearly ground, because it's the only one that's grounded to the actual petal themselves. Therefore, by process of elimination, red is the 5 volt line. I feel intelligent, which can be a dangerous thing. All right, let's start stripping some wires now that we've got... Uh, ourselves ready to go where did I put that right here just lying across me all right where did that knife go oh wow who yeah I don't know what that is but it looks circuit bent arc like dynamo and I want to play it I really want to get one of the uh, cat keyboards I saw one in value village a few weeks back and if I'd known that you'd wanted one I would have purchased it Wait, Toys R Us is going, like, tits up, isn't it? No. In America. Only in oh. America. Wait, I'm going to America. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny, too? I what? saw somebody tweet that KB Toys is coming back. And I've never seen a KB Toys in Canada, but everyone got really excited on Twitter when they heard that it was, it was returning. Really? I was like, oh my god, it's the 90s again. And I was like, okay, I guess this is a thing for you. This, is a, this is a toy, this is a huge toy company that went mm -hmm. into business in, like, the late 90s. That was what, eight, Intel's 8th generation toy store? KB Toys, yeah. Yeah, KB hmm. Toys. Okay, good. These are easy to understand. In my wiring diagram, uh, they've, they've colored the cables for the RJ12 cable that I'm currently working on, but not the ones from the inside of the Logitech, which is why I am... Uh, I had to figure it out myself. Whoop. Okay, that worked. Wow, really well. So apparently this uh, this wire stripper will do a good job if you do all the wires at once. Okay. What if you only want to do one wire? I'll do them all. Yep. Uh, all right, let's Nice big guy around here for the heat shrinkage. And then let's get some little guys on there too. Six to be exact. I'm going to need to buy more of the small shrink tubing, it looks like. We need more chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Can you even buy the small stuff without having to buy the entire the assorted pack? I am 100% certain that I can. Okay. Maybe not from Princess Auto. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I take this package back and say, look, it's it's not working. Okay, I wanted to. <laughs> I need a new pack. What's wrong with it? Well, I ran out of this, the small ones. This one's empty. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you see? I, there's no heat shrink left. I wonder what they would do. Like, <laughs> I'm not satisfied. <laughs> Like, I did have but that. I want the same thing. Yes. I did have that pushback the one time. Did you? Yeah, that, that I, I had taken something back that was legitimately broken. Yeah. But uh, they asked, so uh, what, what? Geez, you've had this for like seven years. I think that's a good enough life, eh? Yes, but your policy is also lifetime returns. So. Yep. I saw Beach return a funnel. 
that yeah. had been used yep. with no receipt. Yep. Oh yeah, it's they're great. Yeah. For like an oil change. Yep. That kind of funnel. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you just rented it for free. Balls of brass, let me tell you. And they were like, yeah, it's fine. Just no, like, no, I ain't no, paid to fight about no, this. And, and the balls of brass are on Beach, not that he bought some balls of brass. He no. moved to a different province. Yep. Oh, shit. Got to it. a different Princess Auto. Yeah, they don't care. It's Canada wide. I literally took stuff back to a Princess Auto with ticker tape receipts. <laughs> and they were like, "We, holy crap. You bought this at, and like, yeah, we got that at a place that you didn't have your setup yet. And it's like, huh, I don't know how to process this. And the manager came by and he's like, oh, well, how you process it is you assign it a random surplus code and you give him his money back. Hmm. That's how you deal with this. So, wait, you mean sometime in the future there will be a new a surplus item that comes in, gets scanned, and it will come up as some asshole tried to return this. My boss told me to put in a random number. No, it, 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 it's uh, you, the, the random one. I guess what I mean is there's a very specific one you have to return under, and oh, it's 8 okay. million. Okay. You, you type in 8 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and that's their random stuff, like assorted things. Mm. So if they're like, we don't have this in the system, it's like, doesn't matter, put it under assorted things. We will process it later and sell it to somebody else. Hmm. Right, passcode is not what I want. I want to see the picture. Are dwarves ruddy or pale? Living underground would make them... What? Okay, so living underground would make them pale. If they are above ground, I imagine they would get sunburned in a big damn hurry. Mm-hmm. So, do you think this dwarf ventures above ground often enough to hang out with his buddies in the adventuring team? I mean, slayers are, at least in the old fiction, were dwarves who had dishonored themselves in some way. Mm -hmm. Maybe they dropped a hammer in the forge, something like that. Right. You know, what, whatever their, like, weirdo code of honor was. And so they forsook all their family and possessions, and they went out to fight monsters, mm. hoping that one of them would eventually step on them. <laughs> right. They went out to seek a glorious death fighting hideous monsters. So, so they started off as troll slayers, then went up to giant slayers, Dragon Slayers. Demon Slayers. <laughs> and okay. they went looking for gods. Yeah. Um, I think also, probably Ruddy, yeah. He's a fire guy, right? Yeah. Which means he's exposed to a lot of heat, which means it probably would color his skin. Mm hmm. The color of fire. Uh, if anyone's wondering what I'm up to right now, I am just tinning these wires before I attempt soldering them together so that they'll, uh, they'll connect easier, hopefully. They just call them slayers now? Hmm. Slayer dwarves are usually pretty pale and ginger. Hmm. I mean, this is your opportunity to have fun with our set. Give them a blue mohawk. I mean, maybe. You know, like, do, do but, what you feel is appropriate. But then Gruny would see him with his um, improperly colored mohawk and not let him into dwarf afterlife. Mm. Sorry, was it Gruny? Grungy? Whatever the dwarf god of the forge is called. Dwarf Hala? Yeah, Dwarf Hala. You know what I haven't seen in a while is Dwarf on Golf. <laughs> Or ever. <laughs> Have you never seen it? No. Oh. No. I don't even know what you're... I, I don't believe that what you're talking about is a real thing. What? Hang on, what? <laughs> no, I, I know what Dwarf on Golf is. It okay. Was just, I am it looked agonizing. <laughs> I am unsure of what Dwarf on Golf is, and L now I... Dwarf. Dwarf, not Dwarf. Dorf. Okay. D-O-R-F, Dorf. Like, you, you'd think with a name like Dorf, you'd want to go with Dwarf on Gorf first. <laughs> so... But I don't know if there's many Gorf... Uh, what do you call them? News these days. Like so, he did three things. He did, he did Dorf on golf, Dorf's golf Bible, and Dorf goes fishing. <laughs> they were always this a similar kind of thing. They were all Tim Conway pretending to play a very short guy who had a very unusual accent. Oh mm. no! Yeah, um, 
he never because he he had to stand in one place all the time. He couldn't get off of his knees, so he never walked around. Right. Yeah. But uh, man, when I was nine, that was that was great. That was just comedy gold. <laughs> yeah, it was like you're like we had to rent. You have to rent movies because your parents are going out for the evening, and they're like, "What mm. do you guys want to rent?" And you're like. I want to watch whatever this is. My parents are like, oh, Tim Conway, he was really funny in uh, in on the Carol Burnett show. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can totally rent that. Yeah. And you watch it, and it's like, this is actually really funny. It's very slapstick. It's like whatever. Mm. But it was thirty minutes long, I see which was kind, kind of a waste of getting a movie, yeah. right? Oh, I remember when that would happen. I would be allowed to go. My mom would take me out, and I would get a Kentucky Fried Chicken, oh, like box. Nice. Mm. And then we go and rent a movie. That's good. Yeah. The only thing I remember of Tim Conway was him showing up on The Simpsons once, and I think it was on like the one of the variety show specials. Mm. Makes sense, yeah. And it was, it was. I do not recognize the name Tim Conway. Introducing our gift guest, Tim Conway. What's a Tim Conway? Oh, about two hundred fifty pounds. It's good. No. <laughs> not really. No, it isn't. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's. That that was probably the limit of what he did on the show on on The Simpsons. I'm guessing. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I could clearly understand. Like when I saw him show up on in in that because I seem to remember that episode. I was like, this is clearly because you guys love the Carl Burnett show, mm-hmm. and that's understandable. All right. Well, here goes nothing. Using dwarf flesh. Vallejo game color. It's oh, very red. Vallejo, as you, can see. you say? Mm-hmm. The 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 very same. Really? Yeah. Boris Vallejo was that was his name, right? Yeah. Boris. Yeah. yeah. Getting our paints and uh, just uh, gonna lay on a. Do you think this is one of those like Wolfgang Puck situations where he just happens to have his name on a whole bunch of shit? Probably. Okay. Like these are probably. Not I mean, I, I don't think Boris plays Warhammer, so I don't know what he knows about miniature painting. But you know, maybe it seems appropriate painting a barbarian with Vallejo paints. Mm. I guess maybe he does have a Vallejo-esque bust. I didn't realize that he would. His he had a nude chest. Mm-hmm. Neat. Dwarf slayers don't wear armor. Ah. There was one, actually, when they were made out of pewter. Uh, one of the dwarf slayers was actually nude. Really? Yep. Very long beard. Mm. That's too bad. At least I hoped it was a beard. Oh, wow. See, I hate this primer. Oh, you know, the Tamiyo. Yeah. It's, it's Tamiya. Not, Tamiya, yeah. It's just not grabbing any of that. No, like the, the paint is almost sliding off of it. Ugh. Primer should just drink paint. It should grab it. But you can see it's like it was just like even a tiny bit less porous it would be beating i feel i assume people in chat are making the thin or paint joke thin your paint thin your paint no they're just asking if you primed it on the sprues yep Because that's the only way you're going to get a lot of these uh, places. Because if you pri- if you assembled it and tried to prime this guy, guess what? You're not getting anything. <laughs> you're, you're, there's going to be shadows, and you're going to have to like like prime one side, then flip it over, prime the other side, turn it this way, prime again, this way, prime again, and then you've got six inches of primer on the damn thing. Jesus. Prime it on the sprue. You might wind up with a couple of spots where the sprue was, mm-hmm. those are easy enough to compensate for. Best primer is primer that goes on very transparently, very, very lightly. Okay. Blue. 
red. It's brick. Brick is white. White to red. Maybe the conventional wisdom has shifted some, but I think with especially miniatures that are this three-dimensional, if you assemble then prime, you're, mm, I think that sounds like more work. Like you're yeah, asking for bad trouble. time? Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. Paint the consistency of milk. <coughs> I mean, if you're going to be, if the idea is that you're going to be, um, if they're thinking like, yeah, we're going to send you these things on, on, like as plastic, right? You're getting you're getting this stuff plastic. Why wouldn't they prime it themselves? Just because during shipping it get all rubbed off and probably it sounds like a giant pain in the ass. Okay. It's more it's it's another step you'd need to add to the factory. Mm hmm Also, some people don't like to prime. I don't know, that sounds dumb and a not a good idea. Red goes to Okay, so green to both. I mean, the most overlooked step typically in uh, miniature preparation is not the priming, it's washing the plastic before priming. Ooh. Because plastic, when it comes out of the, out of the mold, has a thin film of release agent, mm. right? So that the plastic doesn't stick to the mold or that it comes out easily. Like you, you grease a cake pan. Yeah. Similarly, you grease a, a mold or at least you used to. So you take your, your new plastic sprue to the kitchen sink. Jesus, smash. That's amazing. It's a fine looking miniature. Um, and you, you, you wash it with just detergent. I prefer light primer. There's, there's vigorous debate over light, white primer and black primer. I like uh, white primer because I prefer the bright colors that it facilitates. Dark primer does a lot of your shadows for you. Um, there, there is the miniatures have a different character depending on what primer you use. I prefer light. Blue to white. They don't do like a fifty percent gray. Oh, uh, you probably actually. But then at that point, it's like, now you're going to have to do your highlights and you're going to have to do your shadows. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you do both, right? But I presume this is actually, you, you could probably, I'm probably just objectively wrong. There's probably no actual difference between miniatures primed with white and with black done by diligent painters. Anyway, I'm just getting on a big old sloppy base coat of actual, literal, dwarf flesh. That one seems good. Blue is pin one, which is break, goes to white, which is break, good. I didn't F that one up. Hooray. Yeah. Huh. Actually, hey chat, want to see a trick for making antennas if you're doing science fiction or, or um, science fiction models or maybe like World War II models? <laughs> I, I do, but I think I've heard of this before at least. Yeah, probably. Here. Back this off. Why don't you, uh, what do you need here? flick that lighter for me? Actually, hold on. I've been meaning to fix this later all day. Mm. Where's my... This'll do. Gray primer might actually be quite nice now that I think about it. There we go. Lighter's fixed. <laughs> you took the safety off? Yep. yep.
All right, uh, we're gonna try to do this. Hang on, dudes. Oh, uh, sorry. Here, how about I put it down here? Okay. That did not get any better. There we go. Huh. And yeah, that'll be a bunch of antennas. Yep. You could coil some small rope that way. Mm hmm. Got a little bit of a blob down at one end mm -hmm. right here, but. I mean, it's not like you don't have a lot of material to work with. Mm hmm. Damn. Yeah, so that's what you do. Just like 10 seconds, not even, a couple of seconds over a flame. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. I need to do yellow to orange now. Just remember, plastic is essentially frozen gasoline, so uh, it's flammable. Expect the materials. Right now I'm just bending the wires into a position that I know I can hold together while the solder cools. Because this is, does not take a lot of heat nor a lot of time. I suppose I could bring the, the third hand up there. And uh, Phoenix 888. Yes, I have. Uh, doing So you can do spot pipetting. Right, like if you're doing some um, uh, chromatography on silica sheets. What was the question? Oh, if you do, if I've ever done that with glass pipettes, and yeah, you totally do. You take the um, the little Eppendorf, like Ooh. disposable ones, over a Bunsen burner flame, which is the only time you actually use a Bunsen burner anymore, mm. or at least I do. In biology labs, you still use them for sterilizing things, but otherwise we use really? hot plates. Just emergency sterilizing, or just straight up anytime um, you need to sterilize a tool. From what I burner. understand, like when you're s spreading plates, right? You've got your your loop, mm -hmm. which you dip in your whatever your biology stuff, and you smear it on the plate, and then you sterilize it in the flame, and then you go back and you scrape and spread, yes. sterilize again. Okay. Yeah, I would have assumed it would have been all autoclaves, but they, yeah, I guess you do need to get in there. Yeah, you know, when you're doing it quickly and you're just trying to like isolate cultures. Fast and loose. I don't know, I don't do biology. We had to dissect a rat in high school and that's when I decided biology was not for me. Mm. Okay, so that's Yellow next up is green. And green goes to green is gas, which means green goes to or it. Yellow is gas. Good. Green is pin three. Pin three goes to clutch. Mm. Clutch is orange. Wait, clutch is green. So green goes to green. Three, green, clutch. Green, clutch. Okay, hey, one of these colors matches up. That's useful. Good work. Thanks, Thrustmaster and or Logitech. Wait, did Logitech buy Thrustmaster? No, no. Uh, I'm. I'm currently mating a uh, Thrustmaster cable oh, to a Logitech uh, pedals. Right, yes, I'm sorry. Thruster still inex Thruster Master is ex inexplicably still exists. 
No kidding. Like, I would have ex I would have expected them to have been bought up by Mad Cats and then go away, or by Thrustmaster and then go away. By themselves? Or Logitech, you mean, or like one of the other? Microsoft. Yeah, something like that, right? I wonder if the uh, Super Gronyard, um, like, flight sim dorks are that big a market. Yeah, it's a good point. I, I guess everyone's just so used to controllers now for everything. Mm -hmm. I, by which I mean just regular old handheld controllers, game pads. Okay. This is coming together. I'm not going to say it's coming together amazingly, but it's coming together. <laughs> The trouble, the problem is, I'm gonna have to take this home and test it now. And if anything's wrong, I'm gonna be very sad. We'll do a continuity test at the end. Okay, two more wires on one side, three more wires on the other, but that's expected. <laughs> there is a bridge. Mm. Uh, next up is red on that side, and red becomes. Red is pin four, which is the five volt. I believe we discovered that that was going to be the, or the red, right. So red goes to red, wonderfully, expectedly. And then everything else gets put on the blast. Shredder, build me a body. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now, uh, yeah, that's going to be stuck in my head forever whenever oh. I look at this guy. Crying, you know it takes much work for me to create your body. I need your help getting to Dimension X. Something about mutagen. Ah, these turtles contain all the MacGuffin. We must crack open these turtles and harvest the essence within. I'll send my two assholes, Bebop and Rocksteady, to get the job done. Oh yeah, those guys were absolute... Did they ever do anything, Bebop and Rocksteady, or did they just suck? They just sucked out loud. Like, those guys sucked sour ass. They never did anything. Yeah, but boss, it's workman's compensation. There we go. He looks like a giant baby. Yeah, he does. <laughs> wow. Yes, he does. That's wonderful. He might need Giant some no face baby. He might need some scars. Oh, that's better. Baby with a beard. Yep. Beard baby. New from DreamWorks. Yes, damn it. Is it uh, time for breastfeeding yet? <laughs> no, I just made myself nauseous. <laughs> Oops. Blah. So are you painting the inside of his face? Oh. Uh, no, no, no. I'm okay. painting the outside of his face. I see. Also known as his face, Beach. <laughs> why do you ask? <laughs> what color is the inside of my skull? <laughs> I said that, that that famous retirement book. What's the inside of your fa what color is the inside of your face? Yes. <laughs> and who moved my face? Uh, the faceless barber. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry, that's that actually does sound like a Canadian uh, film board production. Yeah, yeah. It's like the cat with hands. Oh, the cat had hands the very next day. The cat had hands. Why did it have hands? 
cat had hands. We tried to take them away. <laughs> Thank you very much for finishing the song. What you say, Ron Jack? Well, you can't. Ooh, I might actually get to use Flesh Wash on Flesh. Whoa! Slow down there. I remember the tournament package for our old Warhammer tournaments every year. In addition to all the scenarios, it also had a line in the front about how Flesh Wash wasn't just a color. Something you should do wow. before you come to our tournament. It's a way of life. That's actually kind of clever, though. Yeah. I, I'm really pleased with that. I'm, no, I'm less pleased by the fact that we have to keep bringing that up. Yeah. Generation after generation. But. No, tournament after tournament. I mean, it's not, not to do with, like, what you remind them once. They're like, oh, right, uh, hygiene. It's like, no, every time you have an event. Mm -hmm. And it's not enough just to shower. Put on clean underpants, please, and socks. Yeah, I've got a... Pot of flesh wash here. What? All right, let's. Uh... Oh, I've got a great big pot of flesh wash. You got a brand new bike. Yeah, you can see it's still good. <laughs> Highly valuable. This and a pot of um, deadly nightshade. Oh yeah. Somewhere in here. Did my deadly nightshade finally? Give up the ghost? No, this is hideous blue. I don't have any Deadly Nightshade anymore. Mm -hmm. Deadly Nightshade was the best color they ever made. Yeah. It was this wonderful, like, uh, blue-gray. Now it's gone forever. Mm. Deadly Nightshade, a.k.a. skill in a bottle. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, Litha. Yeah, li Litha has it. Speaking of skill in a bottle. Agreed. Speaking of skill in a bottle, I think we've got this uh, all wired up here. I'm just going to uh, close off that last. Come on, you can get over that hump. There we go. Close yourself off to all feelings. Cool. And then a great big piece of heat shrink. Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. We'll get to that once we've done a little bit of continuity here. Ah, like any. <laughs> there you are. But that is that is generally how once you've shrunk all the little wires, you put a big piece on and. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's what I'm doing this time. Okay, so that's one. Pin one was blue. Blue connected to. It looks mm -hmm. like white. So where is our white? Hey, that's good. It's not making noise anywhere else where it shouldn't. Good. Yellow is next. Yellow goes. Mm -hmm. Yellow go to. Apparently, you're not following NASA spl wire splicing. <laughs> Wires this small? Not this time, buddy. I uh, I think I saw a picture of NASA like, uh, not only like their wire braiding mm. or their lashing together of things. It was beautiful. Mm. Oh yeah, they do good work. Yep, that's good. Okay, orange is good. Uh, green goes next. Green is the clutch. Oh, I could just be plugging into the actual thing itself. Okay, cool. It, it looked. You, go ahead. It looked tough and competent. Mm. The one thing I really want to also get into is uh, wire lacing. Ooh. E well, yeah. When you have like bundles of wires, yes, and then you like lash them. Yep. 
all along in one yeah, like one in piece one break. string. Yeah. yeah, that's another NASA thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what was I on? Green? No, I was on pin four, which was uh, five volt. So that should go to everyone. I'm assuming the bottom. Yep, good. Uh, and then finally ground. And last pin, just to make sure, it should also be ground. <sighs> Success! Nicely done. And uh, we still have time. What time is it? It is uh, 4, 15, 18 minutes to the hour. OK. Which means, oh, let me just button this big guy back up here. We're going to, oh yeah, we're going to put the big old cable strain relief on there. Run that over top of everything. Oh, it's not, it's not long enough to make this completely clean, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that the, there's enough friction to hold these things together as well as the solder. Mm. Nice and tight. Okay. Now let's push that back a little farther and run the wire through the strain gauge. Man, that would be really great if in Star Trek one day, like, by the seventh season on TNG, the new um, the new Starfleet recruits were showing up on board and being like, you know our new communicator pins have more power than your main computer, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ, they'd be, new Starfleet recruits would be coming in wondering why they can't use their own personal uh, communicators made by, I don't know, some Ferengi company. Yeah. God, Apple would be bought up by the Ferengi immediately. <laughs> Amazon is actually just Ferengi first contact procedure. I like it. Jeff Bezos had an ear reduction, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, has anyone asked what Jeff Bezos' uh, position on Umox is? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> okay, so we got Cam's position on Umox. Yeah. Oh. oh, there we are. Nude man goes on bender. Mm. Yeah, this dwarf wants to tell you all about Coney. <laughs> Did we ever get that guy anyway? <laughs> what happened with that? Get him, I thought we were electing him to something. What? Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what ever happened to that, no. I hope they did. Is he related in any way to like the Szechuan sauce? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Yeah, by, by DS9, the Ferengi were awesome. Or at least Quark was kind of a neat character. Quark and the Grand, the Grand Negus re really sealed the deal mm -hmm. for me. Like that show just had so many great characters on it. Like oh. is Garrick the greatest Star Trek character ever? Yeah. There is a lot, there is an argument to be made there. Or at least he had the most fun writing. Is Gul Dukat one of the best villains in uh, in science fiction? Maybe, yeah. Well, he certainly has one of the best arcs. Hmm. Okay. God, we really need to get through season three. Of DS9? Yeah, I've never seen it before. Really? Yeah. Like, we've never, I never, I started watching DS9 when it started. If you make yep. it to the end of DS, uh, DS9 season three. Yeah. You get one of the best episodes that had ever been made in Star Trek. Okay. Called The Jem'Hadar. Wait, no, we made it through season three. Oh, okay. That's right. 
Yeah, because uh, that, that's why I'm confused, because it feels like I've watched season three in perpetuity. Like, I've watched mm -hmm. it over and over is what it feels like, because I'm like, it just felt like it took a long time to get to the end. And then we saw the Jem'Hadar, and I'm like, okay, cool, great, I understand. Let's get to season four. And we just kind of have not gotten back on that. Mm -hmm. I think we watched the opening to se season four and then just haven't gone any further. Yeah, things get very good very quickly mm -hmm. at that point. Cool, all right. I mean, not that they aren't already good at that point in the series. Mm. Sorry. Ah, there's my little rubber boy. Okay. Now to reassemble this. <sighs> okay. This goes back here. Spring mm. goes in there. Cylinder goes in here. And compression begins. Hands get very greasy. Dreaming of some ideas? I'm trying to think of how I'm going to like shade this guy mm. so that he doesn't look like a baby. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so that he doesn't look like an enormous baby. <laughs> An enormous, weird, muscly baby. Oh my god. A lumpy baby. A lumpy baby. S Speaking of Space Babies Cam, 2001 is getting a uh, another run in the States with oh, yeah. a pristine... Uh, unrestored print. Unrestored print. No shit. On 70 millimeter. It's its 50th anniversary, That's isn't why, it? yeah. Ridley Scott was uh, the one who was... No, yeah. yeah, Christopher Nolan Christopher is Nolan, yes. overseeing the, the transfer. And it's like, there will be no remastering, there will be no retouching. It'll be coming off the uh, original stock, like what they have for masters. It's like we're doing an unrestored print. Well, yeah. So field trip. Well then, <laughs> I don't know where they're showing it. Like, there's been no announcement of here's all the theaters. It's like we're showing it in this one place, and it's like okay, all right, all right. I mean, I'll go there. <laughs> I'll go there. Well, all right. We've got the flesh wash, so might as well use it. Liquid skill. Maybe if we lobby hard enough, they'll bring they'll bring it to TwitchCon. <laughs> it better. <laughs> all right. You ready to see some shit, Twitch chat? We're going to start with his back, which is covered in, like, scarification. So let's see what this does. This is about a 50-50 mix of flesh wash with water. This is why this is called liquid skill. Wow. Holy hell. And you're done. <laughs> that kind of just, that made a huge difference. Well, it'll help me see what all the details actually are. Because yeah. my eyes are feeble as an old man who's going to die soon. Of, I don't know, consumption <laughs> or something. People still die of that. Probably. I feel it's very important that I get the dwarf's neck tendons to stand out in like hyper detail, even though they'll be covered with his beard, because I think that's in character for him. 
He's just like made of 90% neck tendons. Roided out. To a degree never before seen. This guy has to look like he smells like beef jerky. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think... Gruni laughs at you from his mountain. His mountain got overrun by orcs. That's what fucking happened. Stupid dwarves. <laughs> Give back the phoenix crown. <laughs> Hold my screws for this guy. There they are. That is nuts. I mean, this, all this is doing is bringing up the sculpting, right? Yeah. But being able to see, like, shadows like that, like, So glad we have that pin right over your head. Me too. Yeah. I don't know why we didn't do this before. Yeah. This is this is perfect. Forever now, this is the way it will be. Yeah. Oh yeah, I should show off the little uh rubber boy here. He's tiny and squishy. Okay, and can... I'm gonna pull that over to you then. Yeah. Uh, if I can find your hand. Up. Thank you. Too far up. No, keep going. There we go. Look up. Look way up. Yeah, this is what I've pulled out of my brake pedal. So you push the brake until you hit this guy, and then he goes... Okay. But now I'll get a proper linear response from my... Is it not going to bottom out, though? Like. Oh, yeah, it'll bottom out. Okay. But, I mean, you shouldn't be bottoming out anyway. Like You should have the ability to bottom out, but you shouldn't be doing that. Okay. Because <laughs> you're braking. Get a big metal spring. Like, are these runes on his back supposed to be tattoos? Are they ritual scars? I think they're supposed to be scars. I like the idea of them being scars. Or he ends up having some of them tattooed in blue to offset the ones that are in red. Are they supposed to glow? Ooh. Maybe they're supposed to glow. Get some UV paint. Maybe they're supposed to glow like they look like they're forged. Yeah, like he's like a berserkery type, isn't he? Yeah. Raging. Yeah. I am gonna forget that. Unless I do it now. Be right back. Sorry. <laughs> We're receiving summons from uh, from command. God, I just remembered that in Enterprise they were in the very first. I tried watching Enterprise. Mm-hmm. And I had to stop when the very first place, that, like the, the Vulcans are like, space contains so many things that would blow your puny human minds. You aren't prepared. Which and is... the first place they stop when they get out into the galaxy is a peeler bar. Yeah. Like this? Like, no, that's... This is what's out here? And this... they're like, no, we meant other stuff. This is what's in Weehawken. I want to see things in blue my... God, so there's. Well, I was a... expecting attack ships on fire off the shore of Orion. Yeah, well, show me what that well, looks this like. This is an Orion. <laughs> Look, she's very nice, but I'm not. Show me the fires. Where was the. Uh... Oh, God, there's a. Uh... So at Sundance, they've been sh starting to show VR films. Oh, yeah. And uh, one of the winners this year was. Uh... It seems to be using similar technology to what was used in Interstellar. Oh, really? To the black holes. Neat. But it allows, it's a film that explores more about black holes specifically. Cool. And the life cycle of stars. And yeah, it's, it, it's something I'm looking to track down because I would very much like to see that in a virtual reality environment. Man, what if Interstellar was an awesome movie? What if? I, I didn't think it was a bad film. No, it just, could have been so much cooler. Yeah. If it hadn't ended with, well, good thing the men took care of things. <sighs> After the irrational women folk. 
You would just get more films set in that universe. Mm. Post ending, I guess. If only so I can see more of those robots. Oh, yeah, yeah. The drones were awesome. Yeah. There's a note from the chat that says the runes are gold hammered into their flesh. Really? That's rad. Okay, yeah, that's. One. Well, I'm, I was going to say that's metal, and I'm like, yes, Cameron, that's what that word means. Mm -hmm. Literally. Okay, cool. Well, we'll paint them up like that. I mean, you could also say that they're. No, that's not even a good joke. Never mind. I have... was going to make a joke about ductility, but decided against it. Mm. Sorry, Beach. I was gonna, do you, do you have a uh, do you have something that will actually like work as gold painted into that? Oh well, shining gold. Look at that. Yep. I want to hear Ian's joke about ductility. What was that going to be? I also have. No wait. I Thanks, have Cam. Another gold. Burnished gold. Ooh. You got shining gold, you have shining diamond. Shining finger. I have no idea about anything in Age of Sigmar, by the way, so. Basically all I knew about um, War Warhammer Fantasy Battle got deleted when they were like, nobody actually buys and plays this game. We put millions of dollars into building these miniatures and nobody is buying them. I love that that, uh, that art that you're talking about for the new Yogmoth thing with Gerard holding Urza's head, well, I'm assuming it's Hannah, is in the center of like that construct. That entire construct, there's a Giger painting Ooh. that looks like that. But it's based on, is it Avalon? The painting of the island of Avalon? The horseshoe-shaped island? And then Giger did a version of that that was all yes. Gigery. But I do know now of an artist I think I need to introduce you and Alex to, mm. if you're not already familiar. Japanese artist did work on some of the Final Fantasies, and is very heavily, you can tell, influenced by mm. Giger. Neat. But definitely likes doing the sci-fi stuff as well. And that thing is actually Yogmoth dicks? Neat. Oh. Oh, no. He's back in construct form. Ooh. I mean, was he a construct or was he... Uh, Yogmoth got depicted in a couple of different ways. Apparently the crowd in Phyrexian Arena mm -hmm. is Yogmoth. But Yogmoth, uh, as far as I understood it, was a cloud of black mana. Interesting. For most of... I mean, that, 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 that fits. Hmm. Oh, getting so close. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm glad we're still showing off things I've made on stream. Mm, mm -hmm. Carbonated on, water is get, something. Get him into focus. There's got to be a focal point somewhere. Bring it's going to be way... No, it's going to be way further yeah. back. Ooh, I think we're looking at aberrations in the glass, too, being a problem. Yeah. Quality content here at the Loading Ready Run <laughs> broadcast network. Yeah. I mean, I am just screwing things up here. You know what? I think at this point we can probably call this a show. Mm, yeah, we, we just run... Holy hell. Run oh, yeah. Intros. Bixinski. That's that's some good artwork. Mm. Anyway, yeah, uh, this has been Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, where uh, I have been Ian. And I have been Cameron. And we will continue to be so even after the show is over, but we'd like to thank all of you for tuning in and watching us today. It's been a blast. Mm -hmm. I've managed to get, what was it, the cable, the extension cord, and the pedals. Was there anything else I did? It's been three successes for me, at least. 
Yeah, and I finished two miniatures and got started on a third. That's that's a success. I if yeah. I've never heard one. Yeah, so good uh, good show. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, incremental success counter, please. <laughs> <laughs> that said, if you'd like to see more of our shows that are either successful or sometimes slightly less successful, they're always success. You can check them out at loadingreadyrun.com. That's where all the great shows live, both pre-recorded and, uh, and live in nature. Check out our schedule there. Check out our various other options. And if you would like to support us, you can do so either at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun or here at twitch.tv. And we would like to thank everyone who has chosen to subscribe during the show and those of you who have given bits to Corey, who are those lovely people who've done those things. We'd like to start with Forge Bold. Mm. Six months of subscription, about a year since I started watching and half a year since I first subscribed. Woo, thank you for subscribing for me. Hondor64 has come back for the 12 months, saying 12 months, it's almost one year, and the time it took me to paint my wood elves. Wow, fast. Jorodowski, Jorodowski has subscribed for 13 months. That's almost as long as Cam has been painting these miniatures. <laughs> it's steady on now. <laughs> uh, Ogier300 for 31 months. 31 months, it's almost as long as Cam's been painting those miniatures. Hey now, wow. Hateful. Living in Bedmon for four months, four months. That's enough time to build a trimester. Ew. Ice Light uh, has reset for the 15th month, saying, pretty sure I clicked this button a while ago, but it's offering me another prompt. Okay. Alchemist Merlin has subscribed for 36 months. I should be packing for PAX East, but instead, I'm watching this. Well, so should I. Why not? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Beej has to fly out in like four hours. Dimitri Wilgard is a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for deciding to support us. Screaming Peasant has subscribed for five months, super late, but thank you, Ion, Ian, I think you mean, probably typo, for teaching me to sharpen knives. It's made a huge difference in both me and my parents. And Beege was having problems because he used a wet cloth. Learned that the hard way. Thank you, Cam, for the painting advice. Hyrult is a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for deciding to support us. And thank you to Arconis for 25 months of subscriptions, and thus we watch these masterful artisans pour their enthusiasm into their work, watch enthralled, and their skilled craftsmanship. Also, salutations. Mm. JTH Develops has resubbed for the second month. Thank you for coming back. Yeah. Snake Ace is a brand new subscriber. Welcome, Snake Ace. Ink Face Foss has resubbed for the 14th month. Glad to spot this was on tonight. TTSF is a very special calming show. Thank you. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Crash for 46 months. Fiddly solder work. Woo, it was. I don't like it, but it happened. Elevation 4,000 feet has resubbed for the 16th month. Yay, more lively Gundam discussion, please. <laughs> One day. Startled Lemur is a brand new subscriber. Thank you, Startled Lemur, and welcome to the chat. You can calm down now. DG Xenos has reset for the 36th month. I always lube before I spread for three years. The robot's on for four months. Woo! Been enjoying the content mu for much longer than four months. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching. Herbert Herbaderp has reset for the 10th month saying, Flesh Wash. The Perber has subscribed for 10 months. I always love watching Cam paint minis. Hmm. Me too. Mini Chi has reset for the 15th month. Almost forgot to renew this sub, but I got there. You did. The Nerd Wonder has subscribed for four months. Welcome once again to the channel for a fourth time. Stormy Sky has reset for the third month. Thank you very much. Fairy has subscribed for 13 months. Lur, so much awesome. It is a quantifiable amount, yes. Mm. Juice Stain has reset for the... Or, Brand new subscriber, welcome to the channel. Thank you for supporting us. First time ever. Vios for eight months. Always nice to watch TTSF. There's something relaxing about watching Cam and Ian create. I enjoy it too. Oh, and for 1,020 bits, we give thanks to Earthen One, Xanto69, Rock Pusher, The Perber, 42 Milliways, and Mystera. Thank you so much for those bits, the mm -hmm. bits, the bits. Wow. So that brings an end to our broadcast day here mm -hmm. at Loading Ready Run. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow, starting at the time where we start our shows for the show that we start 
showing. I think they're going to be doing um, uh, Let's Nope tomorrow. I think, th is that the first show? Maybe? Mine o'clock. Mine, Mine o'clock, right. Mine James will be streaming Mine o'clock starting at 9 a.m. Yes, that's early. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, then Let's Nope will happen later in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Check the schedule over at loadingreadyrun.com. Here's and the whole schedule. You can check I'll, it out there. I'll be back in the evening to play uh, some Shulk. Oh, yes, Space Hulk. Get mm -hmm. excited for that. Watch, watch Terminators get murdered by Gene Steelers. <laughs> who's, play, who's playing with you, by the way? Uh, ben. Ben. Ben and I are playing, playing Space Hulk. Fantastic. You don't need to paint those mm. this time. Not yet. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time, ever forward. Never learning.